Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode of the show is brought to you by Bespoke Post. This thing, Bespoke Post, is really cool. I love the last box they sent me. And this summer, Bespoke Post is here to take your adventures to the next level with a new lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. Uh, Last time they sent me the box of awesome. We got two really cool knives, a great useful paracord bracelet, uh, a couple different items for like camping, cooking at a campsite that Zach used with his girlfriend. Good stuff. Practical stuff. It's nice. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered from travel and outdoor gear to breezy summer styles and grooming goods. Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life, right? To get started, take the quick at BoxomAwesome.com. And there's a million different boxes you could get. There's like so many different options. Uh, and if you go to BoxofAwesome.com, you can take a quiz and your answers help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Makes a great gift idea. And each box costs just $45, but always has over $70 worth of gear inside, right? Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code SMOKINGTIRE at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code SMOKINGTIRE for 20% off your first box box. These boxes are awesome. Get at it. Boxofawesome.com code smoking tire. All right. We'll also brought brought to you by Public Rec. These guys rule. They sent us their clothes and we are really, really into them. Uh, The lounge pants they sent me, perfect for going on a road trip because they feel like sweatpants on the inside, but then you get out of the car and you can go right into a meeting. They're great. These are going to be the perfect flying pants for me, right? Uh, the, the things that are the problem about a lot of these lounge type pants, the length is never quite right. They don't use full pants length and waist sizes. And I don't really want to rock sweatpants all the time. If I'm just running out for something quick, it sucks to change. And I don't want, you know, people just seeing me in my, now that, you know, we're going out again, it's like, you got to look good. You can't just be like Bleh, everywhere, right? That is why these public rec pants are Aces. They make leisure wear in waist and inseam sizes because comfort starts with a better fit. Their best-selling all-day, everyday pants are a more stylish alternative to sweatpants and a more comfortable alternative to jeans. It's great for lounging at home or looking sharp for work, getting on the Zoom calls, headed to the bar, or anywhere pants should be worn. It comes in waist and inseam seam sizing, like I said, so they fit short guys, tall guys, and everyone in between. They're made from a breathable, stretchy, moisture-wicking fabric. You can wear them 24-7 and they will look brand new. They don't wrinkle. They also have zipper pockets so your phone and wallet don't fall out when you sit down. They come in nine different colors, one for each of the each of the days of the week and then some and they've got incredibly comfortable shorts, t-shirts, Henleys, polos, hoodies, jackets, and even golf gear and they just launched their women's line so now anyone listening can enjoy Public Rec's game-changing fabric in their wardrobe. I have rocked these things like three days since I've got them, and I'm telling you, road trips, perfect, flying, perfect. I've got them in the closet, and I'm ready to fly them, because I'm, like, really a jeans guy at work. I don't like, even try to dress up, but when I get on an aircraft, I am schlubby, mesh shorts and sweatpants, and then I arrive at these press launches and these, like, manufacturer people, like, look at me side-eyed. So I'm going to rock my public rec pants, and they're going to look at me like I'm actually a professional. And as you're going back outside, going to the bar, going to the restaurant, make sure you've got clothes that are as flexible as your life is. Public rec 
rarely discounts, but right now they have an exclusive offer just for Smoking Tire listeners. Go to publicrec.com slash tire to receive 10% off. That's publicrec.com slash tire for 10% off. You've got to get these pants. They're super soft and delightful. We're also brought to you by Decked, and this is for my truck people. And I've owned a Raptor before. I know what it is like to have my stuff rattling around in the cab or under the seat. And I know what a pain it can be to keep it organized. We used my Raptor as a filming vehicle, and so we were always just stuffing stuffing things everywhere. And not just that, but everything you put in your truck bed, unsecured, exposed to the elements. That's why I wish I could have gotten the decked drawer system. This is revolutionary if you use your truck for work. It makes organizing, accessing, protecting, and securing everything you need so much easier. Each of Deck's two full bed length drawers can carry up to 200 pounds of whatever you got. The drawers roll out waist high, giving you access to your freshly organized tools and gear. Deck is a true 2,000 pound payload capacity load floor. The drawers slide in underneath that load floor. Plus, they're weatherproof, protecting your stuff from the elements and theft. The deck drawer system keeps your gear secure. It's out of sight and out of mind. And if your tailgate is locked, you can't even open the drawers and you can't remove the system. Additional drawer locks are available for added security and peace of mind. And there's also a full line of segmented storage organizational accessories like toolboxes, bags, tie downs, etc. The deck drawer system is 100% made in the USA and backed by a three-year no-hassle warranty with a second-to-none customer service team ready to answer all of your questions. I wish I had this for the camera gear. It would have been so sick. Get your deck drawer system at decked.com slash smoking tire and get free shipping. And that's free shipping. This thing is, is big. It's That's that's a big saving. Deck.com slash smoking tire for free shipping on your deck. Decked drawer system. That's decked.com slash smoking tire. Free shipping is no joke. This thing rules. And of course, finally, we are brought to you by Tradecraft Farms, the official ganja of the Smoking Tire podcast. CBD, THC, edibles, vapables. If you're in the state of California, get it at one of their retail locations. And if not, give them a follow on Instagram. Just search Tradecraft Farms. This has gone on too long. I'm not going to keep you any longer. But we love them, and they support this show. So could you love them back, please, for me? All right, on this episode of the show, Mike Spinelli is in the house. He is an OG, and we have OG type stories. We did it, he was with us at Drive, and he's now at The Drive, and he's one of the best radio people ever. Mike Spinelli in the house on the Smoke Tire Podcast. I hung out with a girl the other night that had a micro Aussie Shepherd that was an Aussie Shepherd this big. It was crazy. Weird. And it was the crazy color one, too, with the crazy eyes. How do they it make... It was like that big. I was like, that looks so expensive. Well, that well, looks <laughs> so expensive. That, you, just, you ever look at a dog and you go, oh, my oh God, my that's God. like a fucking... Because you know people yeah. in L.A., Spinelli, oh, of course. who was in the house for the first time ever. I can't believe it. It's amazing to be here. But people no, but in dogs... L.A. are getting fucking held up for their dogs. <laughs> I can't believe that's insane. I know, because dogs are like Because the dog market. The dog market's crazy. So how do you get... A small, like a small version of a regular sized dog. Is it like, like? I mean, they breed them bonsai, like that. where you cut, you just trim them. <laughs> no, <it's> like, <laughs> yeah, it's just question. like this trim dog, except bit. it only has legs to its knees. <laughs> just, they you, saw them off right. below the knees. It parts. lacks shock absorption yeah. for that reason. <laughs> you know, like the Ford GT suspension on low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah, so just <laughs> drops. <laughs> It's uh, it's stanced, but it's it's static, like static VIP yes. build. Like every Uber driver in New York, it's the, <laughs> it's the. Um, have you ever taken an Uber? Have you ever taken an Uber that was modded? Not you mean like modded? Like the car look- was modded. No, not modded to be a better Uber. <laughs> no, no. Like that's, a guy has someone in a different. tuner car. Um, the never. I never. I've never. I've. I mean, not since like. Cabs, like there used to be, like there was a guy with like, guys with checker cabs used to do like yeah. all that like stuff on the inside. Remember Funny Farm? Remember the cab yes, in Funny exactly. Farm? That, that was, was a like, real thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was like the Diablos Rojos in Panama, where they where the cabs are all exactly. privately owned and they have to fucking out disco each That's other right. to get 
<laughs> to get the fare. No, I took an Uber once that was a, a GTI five door on. Oh. You remember when people would put the Lamborghini her, uh, Gallardo wheels on the yes. GTI? It had the Lambo oh, wheels and it was, yeah, it was slammed and it had exhaust and, you know, it was manual and this dude was just getting it done. And I was Are like, you Matt? <laughs> I was that yeah. was when it rolled up. I was like, "Oh, come on!" I was in a long trip. Like, how did it ride from the back seat? It rode like it looked. <laughs> like a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but that's what the Uber guys. And I don't know if they do them out here, but in in New York, they just take either they take the springs off or they do a complete just chop down. Well, or I I don't know. It's I mean, you it's, can. It's you and I can't sympathize with what a commercial vehicle must go through in New York City. No, we cannot. My father and uh, who was on our show. Was, by the ago. way, that was great was to see cool. you down on the show. Yeah, yeah, it was great, right? Most people don't get to experience his brain working firsthand. It's, it's pretty impressive stuff. But, you know, running back and forth to Westchester every day for how many fucking years? Yeah. And, you know, for most of those years, he had a driver because he realized, like, when there once cell phones were a thing, like, oh, this could be work time also. So, right. anyway, they went from town car to, to another town car to an Audi A8. The the uh, roundy one, yeah, not the, the Ronin first, one. The first gen one. Well, the uh, second, no. second gen. The second gen. Yeah. The one where you could get the V10, but it didn't have that. Right, the aluminum. It had a twin turbo four liter uh, V8. It was the V8 one. Right. But they blew their lease by 90,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, but they went through three air suspensions. Oh, my God. And then my pops was like, we need heavy duty. So they got an Escalade. And I've talked about the Escalade and what an unbelievable shit box it is. The shocks have hold, uh, held up and they haven't bent a wheel, but everything else about it is horrible. Garbage. It just rattles in just just standing yeah, still. Yeah, and it just has rattles. the worst electrical system you can imagine. Uh, Every non-button button has a, a mind of its fucking own. <laughs> the seat heaters turn on completely randomly. Yeah. Just in all four seats. It's a fucking disaster. I, I don't know. I they mean, got rid of it. It's gone. Well, I, you know, the thing was that, like, town cars, it, I mean, they all had 400,000 miles. God bless there, the right? town car. But I really, like, shout the out to the car. town car. I mean, there's really something to be said for a commercial grade livery vehicle. The president's limo is a fucking super duty under there. Right, right exactly. <laughs> or even the even the level higher, right? What's the what's the it's beast? Top, oh, it's the like beast the, is the top kick. It's a top kick. Right? It's a truck kick. truck. Why oh aren't God. more people doing top kick sedan or or oh. or, or you know what I mean? Like yeah. over, like who's that guy? The rainbow chic. You know that guy. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? I think so, but I, can you pull up his Instagram? Yeah, pull him He's up. the guy who builds like cars that look normal until you stand next to them and you realize they're three stories oh, tall, yeah. like that. Like, oh why God. is why aren't people taking like that's a great idea a Cadillac Eldorado body and putting it on a top kick, but like forty percent bigger, like the it would, beast? It would, would be amazing. So There's crazy. one. Wasn't there a? Um, so, somebody who does that with like the, holy Jeep. crap! Look at that thing. So that's his museum. It's like the a Rainbow Dodge pickup truck he made. That's you incredible. The size of the pickup truck compared to it's a like Clifford Walmart. the Big Red Dog power wagon. Uh, but he has he just has these crazy trucks. This guy and sometimes he builds these things that are like way comically cartoony, oversized. Wow, it's really fun stuff. So aren't there a couple of like I don't know if they're pickups that. Look like older, like GM, not quite top kick, or maybe it's top kick size, like like truck size. Yeah. And then they do like they put the pickup, like pickup stuff on. Them, it always like looks the, weird because it looks like a semi cab with yes. like a regular That's pickup the th on right. the pickup bed on it. That. And you're like, yeah. it's it's really for tow and shit. Yeah, it's right. for a gooseneck. A, it's for a fifth wheel. Right, yeah, right. yeah, I mean, yeah. You got your RV, you got yeah. your gooseneck, and you're doing I that. drove one once. You ever drive one? A gooseneck? No, no. Well, yes. I <laughs> no, mean, I've I driven did. that. But I mean, it's a, like a I, like a. I drove the Freightliner oh. Sport chassis. Oh no. Freightliner made one. Oh no shit. Yeah, you could buy a fucking personal Freightliner. <laughs> it was so dumb. <laughs> personal Freightliner. It was the dumbest thing in the world, but it was hilarious for five minutes. I used to. Well, when I was when I worked at T A Burn Chevrolet in in Mount Kisco. Did you when work I was at in that high dealer? school? <laughs> yeah, that's where that I drove the bitter. Remember oh, that right, story? The bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they had a truck. They had like a I don't know what was it called back then. What was the a Kodiak or some Kodiak. shit? Kodiak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Tucker, what are you 
doing? Look the dog this. is, I mean, a real distraction. I like, it's a, no, no, don't, you don't have to get rid of him. I'm just kidding. No, no. Leave, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. He is, but it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. Once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Tucker. Yes, yes. We're on the radio, Mike. Oh, so that's right. Play, yeah, yeah. You can play with the dog, but like silently. <laughs> Continu- you have to do two things at once. You have to continue your thought yes. about the Kodiak so I while did. petting Tucker under the table. Right. I had to drive it to – where the hell did I – I had to drive it to, like, get new upholstery put uh-huh. in. And I had and I had never driven it before. But, like, they were those guys were like, Spinelli, go just take it there. I don't care. Just take it. Yeah, back and in so, the days of no training required. Oh, no training required. And some days it would be, like, a 327 vet. <laughs> And some days it would be the stupid Kodiak. I love trial by fire, though. Oh, it's great. The, great way to learn. Oh, yeah. The clutch. I mean, I was just so nervous. Oh, you drove I a manual so one. nervous. Yeah, yeah. They make them automatic now. They know that the, the intersection of people who want to drive stick and who want to drive top kicks are fucking zero. Right. Nobody wants, <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody wants, wants that, that bullshit anymore. <laughs> no, it's true. Um, are you getting to the point where you prefer automatic cars? Are you man. starting to prefer automatic cars? You know, I don't want to say that because mm. I... I was. I'm telling you, staying inside for a year totally messed me up. That's why it's amazing to be out here. I, I'm, you know, like I can't believe. You ready to fucking party? I, I mean, sorta. Of. Should we get you some booze alongside your coffee, nah, Lacroix, and water? The Sanka is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, I just switched the uh, decaf. Can you explain what that is to people listening? <laughs> no, actually, that, that was a joke from. Uh, uh, it's, it's from Fast uh, Fast Times. No, did, well, it might have been. a heart. I just switched to Sanka. Is that Fast Times or Ferris Bueller? It might be Fast. No, Times. I was thinking of uh, what was that? What was the show with Turtle and um, Entourage. Entourage. Entourage? It was from Entourage. It was right. Do you remember when when La- when Landau Robert Land Robert Landau Martin Landau. Martin Landau. Martin Thank Landau. you. When Martin Land Robert Landau. I'm see <laughs> when Martin Landau was he was like. You know, is that something you might be interested in? <laughs> oh, but they go that's to the something meeting. You might be interested in. <laughs> he goes that to the was meeting a great and, bit. Oh, is that so something good. you might be interested in? Bit. They go to the studio, and he goes in, and he's like, you know, he he's gonna rep them, and and uh, the you know the studio head goes, hey, you know, can I get you something? He goes, uh, a Sanka. It's <laughs> like a Sanka. What the. <laughs> They may, I mean, they must still they make, make it. Sanka. They must still make it. You have to order. It. Yeah, I don't. What know. was the actual appeal? It's it was the, a decaf. It was the first decaf. It was the original decaf. I think it was the original decaf. It was and the Kleenex. It was, it was the Kleenex a decaf. Yes, and it was orange. Like all the branding was orange. Oh, and not so, the not like the beans. No, the oh, green, okay. be no, weird. <laughs> no. But the branding was orange, so that's why. Like when you go to a diner, no shit. Oh, the de- decanter shit. is orange. Cause How de- unfortunate that the color is what stuck the and color. not the <laughs> not, <laughs> not the name. I don't uh, know what you happened can't to trademark Sanka. orange, guys. Sorry, you're <laughs> fucked. Exactly. I don't know what the hell happened to Sanka. Like I think it, you can still oh, get mean, it. But I think I can't imagine they patent it. I mean, if, if they did patent the technology for decaffeination, it expired. It expired. You're out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you? Oh, there Google? you go. What have a oh, wiki that wiki Sanka, one of the earliest de, uh, blah, blah 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 blah. Is this still around? Decaf was developed in 1903. Wow, really? Good for them. Ka, uh, it doesn't really say, it doesn't talk about the end of Sanka. <laughs> I mean, that was right around when uh, Coca Cola had cocaine in it, right? I mean, that was right. Yeah, was about the this same is time. the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine if you're if you're starting with regular coffee in the morning, right. and then going straight to the fucking cocaine, you know, soda at lunch. You know, you're probably really going by the oh, end yeah. of the day. No, but at the end of the day, you're, you're they probably. Wrong. I wonder. I mean, man, that would be that would be what like I would like to use time travel for. Like, how how are these guys getting fucked up 150 oh, years laudium, ago? Laudanum? Was it? No, la- I'm, I'm La- just uh, mispronouncing everything. La- laudanum, right? What's laudanum? Laudanum is like, um, it, it's it's related to an oh, it's an opiate, I oh, guess, okay. right? Well, I mean, that sounds right. They figured they figured out poppies like a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Poppy. Yeah. It's been a minute for poppies. <laughs> <laughs> I read this. I, I can't recommend this book highly enough. Thaddeus got it for me. It was called Blitzed Drugs in the Third Reich. And it oh. was basically about the invention of meth. And basically what happened was meth was invented. People were like, hey, when I take this drug, which they called pervitin, uh, uh, which was meth, straight up it was meth, uh, I become fucking Superman. Ubermensch, perhaps. And they went, uh, I see what we should do is distribute them to the soldiers everywhere as fast as possible and let them eat just as much as they can fucking handle. God, it's an amazing book. But in the beginning, before that, they were giving it, it was part of a 
propaganda campaign for Germany to be the most productive country. Yeah. It was like after World War One. So they put it in chocolate, they put in drinks, and it was like everybody should get, you know, oh, buckle man. down and mm-hmm. let's all work hard to make us the best country ever. So it was they were putting speed in but everything. Did they yeah. not get to the point where everybody just couldn't get out of bed at all <laughs> for like a week? <laughs> it, like, was it was literally probably point? for most of the people, it was probably like getting like a, a low dose Adderall. Daily, probably, yeah, yeah. You know what I For mean? Like people, they yeah. probably got pre- like I don't need Adderall. I wasn't prescribed it, but when I fucking bootlegged it and took it in college, <laughs> you bet your ass I was productive. Yes, Tucker, mm-hmm. if you eat my fu- Look at you fuck, good. what's he eating? Mister, he's never eaten a wire. Just tried to untie my shoe. Oh, um, sh- sh- shoelace is not a wire. Shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> shoelace is not a wire. Uh, laudanum is an alcoholic solution that has morphine in it. Mm. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. How many downers do you want in your shake today? I yes. don't know. Jeez. Give me all the downers. I'll take a little one with a big one on top <laughs> Giant of it, please. <laughs> Drop in a coffee. I mean, but there are so many drugs back then. I mean, what about... Um, Can I have a shot of tequila with a uh, heroin floater, please? Heroin. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure. You think... <laughs> it's the Keith Richards uh, margarita. <laughs> yeah. Hey, love. Can I get one of me old? Get. One of me old jollies. <laughs> right. oh, look at this boy. Oh, he no. thinks he's being good, boy. a good boy. And if we weren't on the radio, he would be doing a good boy. Awesome. But he, because we're on the radio, he's uh, a bad boy. Is that that we're not paying enough attention? Yup. Ah, see, that's oh, how. Yeah. That's how dogs. Look at that. Yeah. In oh. fairness, if he was a cat, we'd probably like he'd probably the cat would be right here with his butthole in our face too. <laughs> That's true. Because we're right? talking to each other yeah, and not the cat. <laughs> yeah, fucking so, Finn, my cat does not like when I do emails in the morning. Oh, I make because I make a coffee. I go to my desk and I start to do my emails. No, no, no. You will give him fifteen minutes of scratches here, <laughs> and then he'll sit down and I could do emails well, she, over him. Right. <laughs> but he's staying. That's he's a, there's, staying. Now you have to pr- you have to just program that into your into your program. No, program that into your system. Schedule yeah, yeah, that no. Into I your, have yeah. scratches time throughout the day. Scratches. <laughs> My life is. We very, are all. We are all. Do you understand all, that my life is pathetic? No, no, man. It goes from it goes from like mobbing seven six five LT. <laughs> Take scratches. Time. You know, in the pages of Road and Track magazine, like heroic level shit, right? right. Bernstein shooting like <laughs> machine gunning <laughs> to like okay. Here's my scratches. Scratches. <laughs> fifteen minutes. Now that's it, Finn. You're only yeah. getting fifteen minutes yeah. today. I yeah, know. the Listen, dream is really up here. The reality is that, that, substantially more pathetic. That's the trouble with reality. I mean, no, really, that's the problem with reality TV is that if it were reality, you would be watching Scratches Time for fifteen minutes. Right? You wouldn't be. We wouldn't be doing yes. it. We would be doing Scratches yes. Time. Yes, reality TV. Yeah, without producers doing this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And feeding you liquor and drugs is no fun. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I mean, I have to do a po- uh, a live stream now, so I'm doing a live stream for for the drive. I just had JF on, and it's the tenth. Just uh, on what platform? Well, are you I'm using, using I'm using Restream right now because it's the easiest. I yeah. might eventually use something that's a little more customizable or something. But it's just to get it started because you know if if I don't get it started, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So well, that's the key, that's to, doing the key to doing anything. <laughs> you just Your email started. signature is still, isn't it? Is it still Colin Chapman? No, I got rid of that. You got rid of that? Wow. That one kept me going for a while. <laughs> so Last article the... won't write your next article for you. Oh right, that was uh, there was, was that, that pre Colin Chapman. That was that was, was ex Colin. That was, was pre Colin Chapman. The the Colin Chapman one was <clears throat> the about the screw and the screwdriver. If you make the suspension adjustable, they'll adjust it wrong. Yes, maybe it was that. Yeah, or something like that. No, no, but in your email I signature forever. forever was your last article won't, won't write your next one for you. Yeah, which yeah. I, I lived by that for a long time. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. There's a lot of stress if you're only ever thinking about your next article. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, right. It's a good hustle mantra. Well, that's true. It it's, is very true. And I it mean, is true. I, everybody, but a lot, you know, that's that's an interesting point. But a lot of people who want to be writers don't understand that. You know when it will? If you're a Scorsese. Yeah. Because <laughs> you then you create a Once, universe and then just bang, bounce around in it. See, there, you know what though? See, if I were writing a book about <clears throat> how to do shit. Building a universe is the way to do it because then it you is. don't have to reinvent everything all the time. Matt Farah, this is by the Disney way. Disney figured it out. They reuse yes. those background celluloids and just fucking move them along while making the duck net. <laughs> hey, uh, all right. Today we're going to make the mouse dance on a, on a palm tree background, okay? Exactly. Okay. Just roll that palm tree yeah. in. Yeah. But that's the way, I mean, that's the thing is if you create a universe, you never have to 
reinvent right. that. Yeah, it's it's kind of like your it looks like Marvel, smoking DC, like smoking all that stuff, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Although then you built the giant car collectors <laughs> garage. Right? No, 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 I determined that the gig economy was not going to uh, set us all free. De- ma- no, I determined that I couldn't live the rest of my life thinking about the next article. Oh, you so you just was like, because that's too much. It's really too much. Well, yeah, because yeah, if you, if you have to go forever on that, it's really tough to have a long term plan. Yeah, but like if you if you have this business as a way to achieve other ends besides pay every single bill right then it's you know that certainly that's, relieves pressure yeah well ask uh, somebody like Brett Burke or or Basm who've been, who've been freelancing for that long and like have made it a thing I don't know they should write books yeah about how they've done it because yeah. that is stressful I mean how do you I mean their Those Instagrams guys, and shit, like, and just where they are at any given time, it's oh, like yeah. it's crazy the amount of travel. Yeah, and they're they're planned out probably months in advance, right? So they know what. I mean, I guess I'm just assuming because I've I've never been able to do that. I just, you know, take a bunch of Adderall and and wonder what I'm going to write about. No, and I, it would be harder for me to do that because of video as well. Like, oh, you yeah. know, just just. With because if you're doing because those guys are like on the press like launch circuit, and that's like an amazing thing if that's what you're into. Right. Well, but they but they're they've been able like over the last year when that kind of dried up, they've mm-hmm. been able to like sort of you know dr- gin up some articles from other stuff. It's just it's just a my I think it's like a muscle that you sort of use or you don't use. Right. But I just, I couldn't keep up the volume forever. I know it. No. So here we go. Yeah. Park some cars. Park. It's all right. <laughs> park we can just cars. park some cars. Hey, look, I did spreadsheets. I've been doing spreadsheets for more than okay. more than that. So we're getting There's back. nothing wrong with parking cars. No, of course. Par- cars need to be parked. If, if, if the internet wasn't a, uh, such an on-demand, you know what I mean? Get, I need to get you to click on the next thing or we die. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just like, that's a lot of uh, like, for wait, you mean forever? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you mean I have to do that forever? I mean, yeah, when does that stop? When do we just coast? Like, is it like, like Labor never. Day, Labor Day weekend? Yeah, like, we can never. just coast. It's like, no, 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 we don't ever coast. So, yeah, and, no, it's, it's, I, the, I mean, the planning mm. of that, I mean, honestly, that is. A hard, that's a hard thing we do. I mean, the grind of it, the daily thing of yeah. constantly, I mean, you know, being an editor in chief of an automotive magazine right now or automotive publication like Kyle Charamka or, 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 um, who, Travis, Travis or, or yeah, yeah, I mean, or I, well, my guy again, my guy again, <laughs> I, it's just, there's, well, I mean, you know, I guess Roden, Roden track has done the, you know, the thing where you do the premium product and then you don't have to do that. Right. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I've been writing, I'm writing the only, like, new car review in the whole book wow. the last couple months. That's great. Which is, I mean, I guess that's a nice, that's a nice thing. Um, it's nice because, A, I, it, I get to do it. And also <laughs> nice because <laughs> the rest of the book, you know, followed uh, the lead of, like, the Road Rat and Triple Zero yeah. into the old, the paperback coffee table model, which I like. Yeah. Oh, it's it's there's so I mean so many started uh, Road Rat Magneto also Magneto yeah Magneto's yeah Magneto's really good uh-huh. I mean there you know it's but and it's, then I have a fun one from uh, called Hyper Trash oh yeah which, I know, you know Hyper Trash, Trash? Sure, that yeah, one's yeah. fun too that's fun because it's 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 mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's more artistic but it's more artfully conceived let's say uh I mean it's yeah it's like it's it's like high concept low concept kind right, of right right exactly it's the almost the paper's nice but like it's like you know it's in, it's what it sounds like pretty pretty much <laughs> it's exactly but it's, what it sounds yeah like. it's perfect yeah i it's i mean good. but it's it's interesting it is sort of like you know, mag, that's what magazines, we knew magazines should be that, right? I mean, we didn't have the right model. At zero to 60, we tried to do that, but we didn't have the right, the business surrounding it wasn't right. And if the business surrounding the thing isn't right, the thing is never going to be the thing you think it should be. Yeah, we needed paper to get to where vinyl was. <laughs> yes. I'm serious. You're that's right. the spot, yeah. right? Because, yeah. like, y- you can have a business selling vinyl now. Yeah. It's, there's fewer people, but they buy a lot of vinyl. 
Right. You know what I mean? It's like, the candle economy, right? So it, it goes from being something that, <laughs> you know, you see, to, you, so you can see to something that you bring out, you know, like when the, you know, when yeah, the good China comes out, you know, when yeah. nice people come over. Not, <laughs> yeah, not all the time, not the scented candles. I'm talking about Hanukkah <laughs> candles. <laughs> Talking about that big once a year score, you know what I'm saying? That's right. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh my God, this Sanka is fantastic. Zach, you make a hell of a Sanka. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I stir it four times. Not, Do you not really? Three. Four yeah, times? Yeah, it's it says three on the box, but the fourth one's the magic. The fourth time is magic. The fourth time's the magic. Freaking, freaking fantastic. Right. Freaking fantastic. Back to candles. Which saint has not been turned into a candle yet? Oh, Abernathy. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a saint? That's, <laughs> is that a saint? If, if it is, I respect I, the speed. I, if, I, it's I stole, not, yeah, if it's sure. not, I even respect it even more. I stole that from Woody Allen. <laughs> oh, well. St. Abernathy's Day. That was... Oh, <laughs> I remember that. Uh, it's, it's, I think it might have been... What was the first one? Where uh, uh, Take the Money and Run. It might have been Take the Money and Run. I don't remember. I just watched The Sopranos with the St. Christopher's Day with the oh, golden hat thing. Oh, my God. I have to go back and watch those. Those it's are worth so all good. Of, it's worth... It's very bingeable. Yeah, I mean, how fortunate are we when we were when that show came out and we had to fucking wait a year between seasons, I, I mean, and now you can just sit there and it's a it's just a forty eight hour movie. I mean, when that came Rules. out, I missed the first season, but a friend of mine taped them all on VHS tapes. I mean, what year was that? Nine two thousand ninety seven. I mean, was the we, first year. Holy shit! Was, was it 97? that long ago? Yeah, it was really long. So in '98, I guess we were still using. And the six seasons, it's it was the six seasons took eight years. Wow! Like it, the first season, I was a freshman in high school, <laughs> and the the last season, I had graduated college. Holy crap. <laughs> That's how long, That's how like long it, it took. It was so fucking crazy. It seems like they crank out seasons faster now too. Of course it's like they as do. Soon as the first ones has aired the yeah. second one is like about to air yeah or it's, or it's like in production but because it's that much show yeah. was the very first show that was the way they make show now that's just how they make shows yeah well, like do you remember they didn't homicide? Like, do that before yeah homicide was sort of like that i mean <laughs> like the idea that or i mean they had a they have a universe yes the homicide universe became the law and order universe right, they, right when munch went up yeah went up to new york lots of crossover <laughs> Was Homicide the successor or the predecessor? Before predecessor. Law and Order. Before gotcha. Law. No, okay. actually, no. It they was were, the backstory? They coexisted. They overlapped, but, law, but I think... So it was Joker, but for Law and Order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what happened was... So, so uh, okay. Law and Order came <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, so hey, Do you know how I got these donuts? <laughs> Do you know how I got this badge? <laughs> I was much sound like I forget. It was Belzer? That was, I think. Was oh, I thought Belzer. you were doing the Joker. Belzer. I was, but I don't know. Oh. Belzer's voice. I don't it was know. Belzer Keep as going. the Joker. You just have to talk. You started talking about conspiracy theories, right? That's really. Oh, that's really what that it's about. His thing, right? He really brought brought a lot of himself. He was so into, good. Into I, that. I saw him once in the Upper West Side at like Serafina's, like like a sitting. Serafina's. <laughs> good drop. <laughs> like, just yeah. like. Outside, like with in the middle of summer, with like the black turtleneck, and the hair was exactly right in the face, and it was like, <laughs> holy shit! I I wanted to say something, but in New York, you don't say anything. There. No, no, you just so never. It's do. absolutely a fucking no. Oh yeah, you just don't. In just LA, everyone says everything. Yeah, it's really funny. New York, if you if you see something, say something. If you see someone, say nothing. <laughs> say nothing. Okay, <laughs> got it. You know who we saw? <laughs> That's exactly it. You know who we saw at uh, CNC yesterday? There was not a, is most certainly not an organized CNC at all. Huh? Uh, Perry Farrell. What? It was very, How's he it was do? Very exciting. Wow. I didn't. I didn't say anything. That's really interesting. But you know, we saw. You know, his dad and my dad both worked in the Diamond District. That's awesome. And like, and we, I think I've heard this, although I never saw him there. We went to the same beach club. We were talking about the Sands. Same beach club. Yeah. yeah what we, beach club? Would you the Sands in Atlantic Beach. Oh. The Jewish Riviera, yeah, and the Italian sort of Riviera. It was like it was, we, we we coexisted. Those clubs have in L.A. are now everyone in L.A. is now copying Soho House. There's like multiple oh, copies shit. of Soho House. Yeah, it's this like, was not that. These are like they're clubs without amenities. They're basically just private restaurants. Right. Soho House was really funny because Alex had a yeah. yeah. That's the only reason I went up there was because Alex. And if then, you want to cheat on your wife, that's really that's the place go. to go. Yeah, or I mean, husband. Or, yeah, or, sure. what, or, or what Whoever, have you. Whoever, your significant what have you? spouse, other. What have you, common law? Sure, common law. <laughs> common law matters. Uh, should we talk about cars? Yeah, let's Does talk it matter? about some cars. Uh, Does it matter? 
Where'd you get that Miata you're driving? Oh, so you know, I was coming to LA, and there, there weren't a lot of you know there there weren't a lot of cars available this week. But uh, I haven't driven a, a Miata since we did the. Oh wow! In Japan, since we did the Japan show. Oh, oh so wow! The last Miata you drove was a 2016 right-hand drive Miata. Yes, they cool. have changed. They have changed quite the new a bit. They're better, much isn't it? faster. Yeah. <laughs> Remember how slow that was? Like you guys were. That was actually well, the R34 Skyline. It wasn't exactly fair. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> but was the Japanese one the 135? Like the lowest the motor lowest that we don't even point, get here. One point three was it? Yeah, we don't get. We didn't oh, get that. Oh, it was a slow one. It was a slow one. So, but that was actually a funny visual joke with like you and Chris like. Like way out in front and the tiny little <laughs> JF little on the radio going, other. keep it, guys, keep it tight, guys, keep guys, it keep it tight. tight. And you're like, you guys you're like, punched. it's not happening, dude. I'm like, there's a hill involved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't have any more gears. You seem to have enjoyed yourself. In the, well, driving that around Japan must have been enjoyable, though. Yeah, no, it was nice in Japan. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there. Uh, although, you know, when we were driving in Japan, I mean, the only great place we drove was that. That's true. Was that. Um, was the the Toge Hill the, the Hakone Turnpike, Hakone Turnpike I believe it's yes, called exactly. yeah I had like the best the worst driving day of almost of my life in Japan followed by the best right because you were went, stuck in traffic was that somebody didn't fucking look at maps oh. before going before our locations uh, department <laughs> didn't <laughs> didn't do a good job and so I had to drive all the way from one side of Tokyo to the other and then back oh, in a first in a R35 Nismo and then in that R34 but but the R the, it got okay in the R34 the R35 Nismo it was so hot that that car like dumps fuel oh, like my God, into yes. the engine to cool the cylinder yes. heads, yeah. I think, yep. which then vents somehow into the car. It, and well, I was getting like re. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was you hours. just you, it feels like the car is going to explode. And it was like a three and a half hour, like it, I think it was like eighty miles, and it was three and a half or four hours. It was like one of the worst traffic jams I've ever sat in in my life. I did life. not produce that episode. And, you did not. And and. And I had to go all the way to get the car and bring and then to bring it back into the city. And then I found out the very next morning when we were gonna go film that the filming location was like a half a mile from where I had picked up the car. Like I could have just gone back to the hotel and got the car in the morning. Instead I had to drive all the way across the city and back. Oh, like God. imagine having to go to Riverside and back to get a car. That you were oh. filming the next day <laughs> at in Riverside, right. you'd be so annoyed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you just made me drive across the worst traffic of my life, literally for nothing, oh my for God. absolutely nothing. I, <laughs> and you paid extra because I put miles on a rental car that I wouldn't have had to fucking put on the car. That yeah, somebody somebody probably sometimes didn't. people don't check maps. Well, listen, <laughs> you know. But I actually I know that that Riverside. Well, okay, so it's a little different. But we got stuck in traffic going out to Chuckwalla. Oh yeah, that time Palm Springs traffic, same shit. I, Musto was in the Charger, and we're like <laughs> that thing was like not happy sitting in traffic forever. He is. I don't know how he can still like walk. I mean, the amount of miles he does in muscle cars. What a oh, brave, man. brave man. Brave man. I don't know how does. Why does his body work? He must I have be no special. idea. His, I the, really don't know. Someone of his height driving those cars, the distances, his body shouldn't work. Well, he tries to choose bigger cars, but when we filmed Big Muscle once, we filmed, uh, he had a Model A, and it was <laughs> oh, so yeah. small, he sat on the passenger I side. That. I was just watching that like again. This, yeah. And oh. when we got done, he, he was just kept holding his chest because like his muscles had seized up because he was driving, you know, just doing like fly curls yeah, the whole yeah. time. And he's like, God, I'm in so much pain. My chest hurts so much. And then we got stuck behind a tree. Train, which is great, and then he got really mad and wanted to hit me. Uh, but yeah, he's a huge, he's a giant human. I think he just got better about picking cars. Like his newest project at Hemmings, he drove a Suburban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was so a good smart. idea. He got smart. That was a good idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God, well, that was how we got. I mean, that's funny. I was thinking about because so t so th what I was thinking was it was ten years since we started drive. Ten oh, years yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. JF said to me across the table in Bryant Park, "Hey, I got this great idea for a car." <laughs> Ten years since we started car, it. Car. Seven years since the the revolt when there was paid content, right. and then five years since a hundred percent of content is paywalled and paid, and right. that's just the standard. Right, right. 
That's it's true. It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't do JF's JF's voice. Who is it? I don't know. I've never heard someone try, but that was a funny attempt. Is, oh yeah. No, I, I don't know Whoa, why. That's, that's like I did not expect to Kermit the Frog. Uh, yeah, it's different. That's a that was. Hey, um, Zach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna film B-roll now. So, uh, um, Spinelli, can you catch up in the Miata? Uh, oh, that was Spinelli, that was okay. Catch up. That was pretty. That was his pretty was good. good. His, he's he's good. We did this for six Kermit hours. We did. Oh yeah, we did for six hours going in somewhere. France. In, was it France? We did. You're the man now, dog. <laughs> you know the man now, dog. Yes, yes. you're the man now, yes. dog. <laughs> you're the man now, dog. <laughs> Just my back. Is that, is that uh, oh, Sean, it was Connery. Sean Connery and Finding, Finding Forrester? Forrester right? The whole crew is looking at us like they're all younger. They're going, one, what is this movie you're talking about? <laughs> Two, who's Sean Connery? <laughs> who is Sean Connery? Who is Sean Connery? You're the man now, dog. <laughs> yes. I was in a movie That's with Catherine Zeta Jones once. I saw her butt. <laughs> You know, oh God, God. But see, because don't always... you talk about the hero of my favorite prison assault movie? Ooh, The Rock is. Oh. That's a that's it's an excellent watch. It's an excellent film. Totally it's an excellent film. Rock holds up. It really holds. up. Really holds up. Really holds up. Car chase is good. A lot better than oh, The Rock holds up. Like better than his Bond holds up. Oh yeah, well I his mean, Bond is problematic. <laughs> True. I mean, all the bonds are probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Except I gotta say, I'm, I'm, I go back and forth, but I'm in a Roger Moore pe- period right now. I think Roger Moore was the best bond. <laughs> he's a, he's a real here. gentleman. <laughs> Leave now. I never believed that he could shoot or fight anyone, even when I was seven. I was like, this yes. guy, really? This guy, he looks, <laughs> he looks like a golfer who's like showed up for dinner <laughs> and his reservation day. He's like, oh, I can help somebody. Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, is this a pistol? It's really heavy. It's really I just heavy. never <laughs> believed him ever. I get, could you take this, please? I yeah, just sure uh, this punched. would be a lighter pistol. God damn. There was more, <laughs> more believable action in Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> I love a club sandwich. I love that dollop about George Lazenby is That's the great. Oh, shit. That is great. I, I, I need to, I need to <laughs> listen to If you haven't that. seen the... And there's also a documentary about him, too, starring him. Yeah, yeah. What is he... <laughs> I mean, because by the way, best cars, right? In her, on uh, Her Majesty's. Secret what Service? I forget, which car is that? The is that the one that has the Shelby in it? No. Uh, it has a. D, does, that, does it have? I don't a, remember which Aston. I don't know if I even ever saw it, but I just really like George Lazenby because he's a fucking G. Yeah. Well, this guy Jen, doesn't give a fuck. He's, he's great. He's more. You know, it's true. I think it was by the way a different or first gen oh, DBS. DBS. There yeah, you go. There you Very go. good. Yeah. Very good. Spinelli sixty nine DBS. But there were some other cool cars in there too. There was oh, there's the there's oh the Cougar. Cougar RX7. Yeah, the Cougar <laughs> was in it too. Yeah, yeah. Sixty nine Cougar. Cougar. Yeah. Um, I just saw someone had posted. There's a Shelby Mustang for sale that's in some Bond movie. It's like where James uh, Bond goes to San Francisco or something. Is that a thing? I I, I don't know. I <laughs> haven't seen. Honestly, I don't have a lot, like, I'm not that into the non-boilerplate, you right. know, other Bonds. Right, right. But if you haven't listened to, if you like the dollop, the one about George Lazenby is fucking off the wall. Oh, God, I gotta watch that. That guy's that. fucking, I, I uh, like the dollop. <laughs> well, you're the one who got me into listening to that, and I haven't listened to it since the ones that you sent me. Oh, so you I need should. To get back I, into I, it. I recommend them. Yeah, Some excellent. of the new ones are, are quite good, too. But um, that DBS, the is DBS, very nice. yeah, yeah. I've always been a absolute sucker for the the early, well, the the Aston V8s. Yeah, well, the the market is agreeing with you now because they just got expen- They're now expensive. Did they? I just remember so when Classic Car Club first started, mm-hmm. that I that I don't think it was their maybe it was their first car. Dude, it was one of the first, yeah, like, five. Yeah, it was five. one of their very first mm-hmm. cars. And they had a mechanic. It was Mike G. Do you remember Mike G? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mike G took that thing apart and put it back together, I think, like, six times. Like, he couldn't <laughs> – I, like, he he rebuilt the fuel line, <coughs> Sorry. I, I think, hundreds hundreds of times. Like, it was amazing. I would come over there and wanting to drive it, and and it would be up on the lift. And I'd be like, Mike, what the – oh, no, 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 it's not happening. I mean, it's not the kind of car you can just let a group of people yeah. pass around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some cars are capable of that <laughs> That's not type me. of abuse, well, and I don't think that car yeah. seems like a real That's fragile, it was, you know. It seems fragile. like it is it's amazing the kind of <laughs> that there's cars like that are old, and they get that part rebuilt. <laughs> and then it's almost like the car can somehow eat that part again. It's yeah. like it's cursed, and it just... It well, goes, doesn't no, 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 that just mean f- the design is inherently bad? 
It's like the body's rejecting the transplant. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> how can it destroy the fuel line again? But it can't. Yeah, and I, I think you're right. Well, there's, there's probably something inherent, else. inherently bad design. I mean, there's there's instances where it's like, wow, well, look, we learned later that the factory put this put ra- routed the evap lines right around the blah 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 and it <laughs> causes an air bubble to do the this and that and right. what we do is now we move the line here and now that shit don't happen you anymore. must own a ferrari and you must have a very good mechanic hummer oh the hummer really? h1 is actually was was one of the more um flawed th- things there they would there's a computer it was called the Pump Mounted Driver, or PMD, and it was a shitty early 90s piece of junk computer. And it had these like cooling fins on top of this circuit board, and, and it was mounted, as described, on a pump. Now, this pump would stay the right temperature as long as the engine was running and coolant was flowing through it. But what would happen is you then turn the engine off and Uh-oh. the pump would just retain heat sometimes and overheat the the pump mounted driver oh, God. and the fucking car wouldn't start and you'd let the you'd have to let the engine cool like fully I mean, and are you then sure it, you didn't have an LMO start. too? Are you sure it was? It was this a is a, mili- a military thing. I know, thing. that's I mean, crazy. So they had, the, there were these like, these, um, you know, what do you call it, like uh, uh, relocation kits and all that kind of stuff. Right. No, the Ferrari actually- But your Ferrari guy, because I've been <clears throat> watching some of those videos, and it's like- Donnie's you got, great. You got to have a guy like that who's seen it all yeah. and knows how to get around it. Sometimes he makes it good... work by putting it back to how it's supposed to be. Oh, so that's a little that's different. What Don, the problem with Ferraris is, is almost everybody patchwork maintains them. So- you have to be really willing to let the one guy who gives a shit more than anybody else go, now here's everything. <laughs> and, right. you know, start from there. And then once you're there, yeah. drive the shit out of it. Right. Because that will keep it working. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. You know, yeah. that, uh, you know, because you, you hear about Italian cars a lot, and usually it's like it's designed for Southern Europe, and yet kind of. it's New York in the nineteen. 19- it, the, the the cold wave of the 70s, right? Yeah, so, yeah. like, everything just d- disintegrates. But it's not always that. I mean, if you have a Ferrari, I mean, that the way he talks about that car is that it's basically the engine's it's bulletproof. It's very simple, and, yeah, and apparently they don't they don't really break uh, catastrophically hardly ever. Wow. So it's just shit rots, and then sometimes people don't fix it like the way that you're supposed to fix it. See? So, you know. Deferred maintenance. You know. You know how that happens? But anyway, you got a Miata for your trip. Do so you have a, a gig Miata. out here, or are you just is this a vacation for you? So no, I mean I I'm uh, I'm going to uh, Gunther Works, right? So you oh cool, are you gonna so go drive the green car? Go drive the green car mm-hmm. or, or whatever whatever car. In fact, I have to <laughs> have a call with them and it's probably hours. Uh, it's probably the green car, and you'll probably very much enjoy it. That's nice. I like I like their stuff. So I use that opportunity to come out and do some other things. We'll cool. do this. I got the well the Miata thing. I got to shoot something with it. Where do I where do I go tomorrow at five a.m. if I want to? Where are you staying? Well, you're right down the street. I'm at the Double Tree. Oh. Um, oh yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, it's a Miata. I mean, it's I'm a, leaving there now, a, and I'm going to another place. <laughs> I think you'll be fine, Mike. <laughs> it's um, ladies. You know, yeah. It's a uh, ladies, it's a I'm Miata, not be so there. it's an inoffensive vehicle, so you don't have to worry about uh, neighbors and such. Right. So uh, I would go to Malibu. I wouldn't necessarily I was, go to uh, Angeles Forest. No, you're right. Yeah, I, I'm thinking Malibu. It's easier to get to in the mm-hmm. morning. You'd be fun. Um, you have wait, a good time. Any, any, uh, any particular, particular roads? roads? No. No, not you're now. not going to go. I'm not doing that now. We'll do that yeah, later. Yeah, I'll, I'll draw you a map after the show. Because <laughs> I know <clears> the <throat> ones that I know a little bit, but I don't know the no, ones I'll that you No, I'll tell you the secret road. Okay. You'll go to the secret road. It'll mm-hmm. be fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to film a video? I won't, yeah, but I won't tell anybody where it is. No, you well, you don't have to. It's okay. We'll Should know. I? No, I don't know, don't like, know. The, but the, the, here's something, right? They don't this like a, when you say where you this are. This is exactly a thing, right? Yeah. This is exactly a thing. Like, you get the locals pissed off at you, and you don't ever, you like, it's We went like, through and deleted all the, we used to put the road names in the videos, and we went through and deleted oh, all of them. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, We got points you, for deleting them. I mean, we, you know, it's the same thing, like upstate New York. I know I have a couple of places. I don't. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. They don't give a shit. They don't. That's the shit. problem with press launches. The audience doesn't care where the fuck you are. That's true. In fact, they have like contempt right. for you if you're somewhere cool. Right. 
<laughs> well, that is actually true. Yeah. Wait a minute. So, okay, so tell, so Miata, I haven't driven one since the 2016. 2019, right, it was upgraded. I never right. drove that one. This is a GT. And then, they like, up, and then they upgraded the engine again. You know, the new one came out in 2019. It right. was a 1.8, but it made 155 horse. And mm-hmm. it was like, okay, it was fine. Some people thought it was great. I thought it was too slow. A lot of people thought it was too slow. So then a year or two later, they kind of hot-rodded the year engine. A year or two later would be... Oh, wait, 2022. Now. When did they upgrade the no, end no, of No, no, you have your years off. They, the, the ND came out in 2016. 2018 was a new engine? They upgraded the engine in for the no, 19, 19 model was year. That engine that you're talking about. the one you're talking horse. about. And that's yeah. what it has now. 180 horse. Okay, so that's... It's good. So, so it's, it's almost like a, it's like a late 80s... 5.0 Mustang. Yeah, yeah, or like an or no, early no, 80s more. Corvette. <laughs> early 80s Corvette. More like, yeah, because by the late 80s, the Fox body had uh, 225. 225, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Don't insult. I'm sorry. No. Um, yeah, so so it's a car that that nobody really gives a shit about anymore. Does anybody, because this is what I'm trying to do. And I, you I need see to a come bunch up, of them around here. But you're right. But you know what the average age of a Miata buyer is? Take a guess. See if you know. 48. I, I would have said something like that, Zach. How many guesses? 52. 62. Is it Ooh. really? I just I read that. Is that a price the average price was age in, of a... Is that because they Edmund. consider corporations senior citizens? <laughs> is that because Maybe? all... Maybe? Is that be because every corporation is listed as a 65-year-old? It's po- possibly a loophole. Is that something they do? <laughs> I just made that Holy up. It's shit. probably not. Do you think that's a pricing problem because the Miata is kind of expensive? I think or it's is a, it just... I think it might be an aging platform problem. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, but I ne- everybody I know who's younger than sixty two has an older one, doesn't have a new one. Well, mm. that except for could a couple, be, of that people. could be a problem. It could be that they're cannibalizing young their own. Don't have money. Well, yeah, because this car is thirty. I don't even know. Because it's, it's hard to have a Miata as an only car. Yes. It's oh, you hard. Can. How could you? Unless you're retired. Yes. <laughs> but then there's no there's no room for golf. That's flags. true. And so you have to be a non golfing sixty two year old. Yeah. Which is, there are. There are some. There, there are some. It would be me. That'll it, be me at 62. 62 is, Non-golf. for an average age, is pretty high. That's pretty high. Wow. Well, it? that's what Edmund huh? said. And it's and in the entire segment, it's 43. So I don't understand where they got that those numbers from. I'm going to have to double check those numbers. But because the other segment. other cars are in its segment? Well, I guess that's exactly the question. BRZ probably, right? right. So the BRZ brings the average down yeah. quite a bit. Um, probably. Uh, oh wait, that's the segment average. The segment average is only forty three. Oh, I mean, the number right. of younger people we see driving FRSs and BRZs is it's, far outweighs me. Yeah, so that far, would make far, sense far. Yeah. that that's bringing the average down. Um, hmm. It's you know, a more three seventy Z. Three seventy Z probably isn't. They consider Get it hundred and thirty yeah. more horsepower. Yeah, I think yeah. the competition must be much they might fiercer than the, it was twenty years ago, thirty years Supra. ago. Base model Supra, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's How weird. Interesting. That's fucking. Old. That's old. Yeah. I mean, it's wow. almost like, do you remember when Scion came out and there was like, eh, we're youthful. We're this <laughs> youthful brand. And it was like, okay, the first year goes by to get the marketing figures. It was like average age, 56. It's like, <laughs> so, so you're youthful, eh? So uh, we're going to. Uh, we're going to shift our marketing efforts <laughs> to uh, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville restaurant. And plant <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's, you know what? Oh, my God. That's that must have been what a bummer. Oh, God. That, oh, forget it. I mean, for them, they were probably like, God damn it. You know, like they all the entire launch was, you know, surfboards <laughs> and lacrosse sticks yeah. and like, you know, just young stuff. And then it was skates. a whole bunch of seniors S- who were like, I want to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could get back up on the skateboard. I mean, my, my hairdresser has a Cyan XB, and she loves it. She's like, it runs well. It's practical. It holds lots of stuff. It's like, that's that's why the older people jumped on that car. On those Two cars. words. Plant sale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. Plant sale. You know what you need to get plants at the plant sale? XB. Yeah. <laughs> you need a, a shoebox that's tilted vertically. You need an XB. It's I mean, right. look, exactly. yeah. Hannah really would like a box. I mean, if they make if go. they made a box that wasn't a shit box, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, but I that's think, the thing that you know they have things. Does Rutt still have that two J powered Scion XP? Maybe he'll sell me that. Oh, Ooh, I hope he's so. got that yeah, cool. he's got you know he's what? He's not gonna let that go. That guy, that guy, right? I haven't seen him in a long time, but that guy has good taste in cars. He does, he does. He knows how 
to burn through some money in a really entertaining way. Yeah, even and like it's fun the for box, the rest of us. Yeah, too. exactly. The box weird box vans, like you the stand up school bus. Yeah, the school bus, <laughs> but like all cool shit. Yeah, good for him. Good Are you going to buy any? Did you buy any dumb pandemic shit? Uh, just a lot of small stuff. But uh-huh. here's so, okay. So here's what I got right now. So the Jag. I, got, I think I think I'm I think I'm up against it. I think I think we talked about this last time. I think it's going to be it's time to go. It's time to go. Yeah. How come? I just I I just want to move it out of there because I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot of space. I might have. Is to, it like? Is it your car? You still have the Mister Two? No. All right. No. I sold. I find. All right. You so I sold no it. Way. Yeah, I sold it. What did you get for it on the way out? Uh, I got more than than I should have. Really. Good for you. Yeah, it was, well, it was. Does that mean you lied to somebody? (laughs) It had been sitting. Does that mean you hosed somebody? (laughs) No, 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 no. So I I think it was was mutually beneficial. So is the Jag just your car? Yeah, I mean, I have I have that. Like my like knock around car is a an 04 Rav4. Like you know the oh, my old yeah. ass Rav4 that I have. I mean that's just for like going to Home Depot and and getting shit. Uh, I mean I never have to. I like I never get like. Wallboard. I don't do big projects. I just do small shit. So like, yeah, that's um, fine. so that's fine. But I don't know. Pandemic has done something to me. I need something else. Something I need more something fun. A little bit more, a little faster, and a little more engaging. I mean, I love this. Is this? T- to be honest, like this is where I am. Like I am here ninety <laughs> percent of the time. But there's something like it's. It's like now. I, I'm feeling a little more aspirational. Okay. Well, that's the, you should. That's okay. It's been like a sufficient amount of time. It's been a sufficient amount of time. It's not like, it's not like you have buyer's remorse. No. You've had the thing for like four fucking years. It's great. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And How I many also, miles have you driven it? Um, what, what is it now? It's about 55. So I got it. It was 28. Oh, so, yeah. yeah you've really bit. driven yeah, it a bunch. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. You've gotten use out of it. I've gotten some use. I also have <clears> that 850i, the 1990 Japanese... Model. I'm sorry. Sorry. You have a BMW 850i. Oh, we haven't talked about this. What? You own, you bought one? No, 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 oh. no, no. It's a is it a, it's a company car. Oh, is it a project car? Well, it started out that way, and now um, I so so just like just like everybody, like I think you know, Hoovy's Garage. I mean, they they, they yeah. all have the same version of the same thing, which is parasitic drain, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, you know, you go through all the process with the with the with the. Uh, with Are the we talking fuses. about the car or emotionally? Emotionally and <laughs> electronically, right? Exactly. And you go through the whole process, and you find like it's coming from, I don't know, the dash cluster. Yeah. And you're like, there's a guy that rebuilds the dash cluster, <laughs> so you can do that, and then you see if it, you try it again. And like, f- I, and, and it turn, it's always the last thing you rebuild. Exactly. It's thing? always the last thing you. But rebuild. if you keep it on a battery tender, will it stay alive? Yeah, but I I think that's the way to do it, right? Like, so will, how long will it last off a battery tender? A couple days? Day and a half, yeah. A day and a half. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Maybe two days. Jeez. Really? Maybe two days. Yeah, yeah. But like, what if batteries. you're driving it though? Like you're if you took it on it a road day. trip. Oh no! If you're driving it every day, it would it's be fine. fine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You All got right. two. I got two pretty solid okay. batteries in there. Yeah, yeah. We we have quite a few cars here in storage where if they're not on the tender for more than like two days, they're fucking done. Up. Right. And so yeah. that's for like and for the me, batteries it's... will test all right. Yeah. It's which is annoying as hell. Right. Well, here's what this car <laughs> needs. Other than that. <laughs> yeah. It needs wheels because it still has the old metric, old wheels uh, that you can't, that get, tires can't get tires for, for no yeah yeah um okay so well, that's that. an easy problem to solve that's an easy that's problem, very easy problem to solve. but i yeah. really i really like it i really like it i don't know i just it's don't a use stick it or it's an auto it's an auto yeah and it's, it's a 50 stick. it's a 12 cylinder it's a 12 cylinder yeah yeah what color uh it's uh what do you call it what's that silver uh, zil- uh zing uh silver uh it's metallic just, just metallic silver? silver yeah whatever just silver it's just zilber <laughs> I forgot it. Too. Are you trying to say silver? <laughs> well, it's German silver. It's right? German yeah, silver. Yeah. It's the German silver. That it's that. One. It's yeah. that. But it's yeah, weird. It's, it's what you might call <laughs> silver. <laughs> like like my car, if you open the hood, it says blau, which right. is blue. So I know what you're yeah. doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> it's silver. Uh, no, it's a fabulous it's looking car. It's a great car. car. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, so I've got that to mess around with if I if I so desire. Um, what we got to do is get you some period wheels. Well, that's the thing. I need period. Well, period wheels that are. Well, so that's what it's got right now. 
So you can't get tires for those wheels, those regular old di- the stock wheels? Very difficult. Really? Yeah. What are the sizes? Do you know? Oh, God, I don't remember offhand, but... Um, they look like 16s, right? Or are they are they 17s? The 16s, I believe. I think uh, Vredestein Vredestein makes Stein them. probably yeah. has... Nope. Has, no? no? Really? Oh, no. He knows, <laughs> to, he knows Roger Garbo, I know too. Roger, too, yeah. Oh, I, I said that because <laughs> Camisa got, you know, big old OG tires for his car for that. I That's know. why I thought it might fit, but I Everything, guess not. and do you know what else Vredenstein doesn't have? Tires for the Jag. Tires for the Jag. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So my my hookup uh, can't even can't even get hooked up. Oops. Oh wow. Oh look at me. My, my well if, yeah. So if you if you sell the Jag, so you have no ownership in this BMW, I, but I you don't. have the care and responsibility. Care and responsibility, and also content. Right. Content. Cool. Well, they're, they're rad little cars. They're they're, they're really very nice. nice. I, I I drove. I you know last summer I start I drove it a little bit more, a little bit more. I took I took it all the way up to. Well, the day that I made it to New Canaan was like, you know. <laughs> it was like crossing the Oregon <laughs> Trail. Like, oh, I, didn't I have made to, it to Connecticut. Uh, I thought I was going to have to eat somebody in Greenwich. <laughs> oh. you, you pull it and throw water on your face. And you're like, you're like sarsaparilla yeah. in a BMW tech, please. You got to New Canaan. You're like, I'm home. Sir, this <sighs> is a Cinderella. Uh, <laughs> sir, this is a Cinderella. <laughs> That is a real Connecticut joke. If you don't get that, I understand. It's a, but it's very good if you do get it. Holy shit! It's the it's the sir. This is a Wendy's, but in in Greenwich. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. It's that. It's a oh, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's no like uh, for, if you're in L.A., it would be sir. This is an Erewhon. Okay. If you, oh, have you been Erewhon. to Erewhon yet? No, is oh, it you like, haven't. No, is it? Th- did we it's, go there? If is you that... took a Cinderella uh-huh. and you really turned up the snoot all the way past yoga instructor and right to influencer, have you, oh, no. have, have you ever gone to Whole Foods and thought this is too cheap and has too many options? <laughs> I'd like fewer choices, but I'd like to pay more, more money. Expensive, yeah. 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 Oh God. Well, of course there has to be that. If right? you took a Whole Foods but put it. On Abbott Kinney real estate and charged accordingly. <laughs> Abbott Kinney. That's where it is. Holy that's actually shit. that's where it is. It's well, right so next then, to Vice, immediately next door to Vice. Oh, so then yeah. So, so that's what's as the you're rent going there? there, if I was giving you directions, I would tell you to head west on Venice, past the massive homeless encampment mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's right in front of Vice. Okay, and then turn into the ridiculously overpriced grocery store full of all the models that's right behind the massive <laughs> homeless encampment. Okay, that sounds. Let me just say, park in between all the G wagons and Teslas. <laughs> that sounds problematic. No, wow. that sounds no. like a social experiment. It's gone right. Gone right. It's gone really <laughs> Absolutely right. right. You don't understand. You just don't understand wow. how I capitalism don't, works. I don't get here. <laughs> uh, you know, LA, LA. So I mean, I I just see what's happening in New York, but New York is different because it's really just about putting up a giant ass building and then walking away <laughs> and then letting the money come in from wherever it comes in from. Here, you I really mean, broke that down, the 80s. Well, you, you broke down the 80s <laughs> really, <laughs> really expertly in New York. I mean, here is different, right? Because, I mean, I've got, all right, let's leave Brooklyn out of it because Brooklyn is, to me, I, I've never really gotten into the Brooklyn thing because when I was growing up, Brooklyn was where your grandparents lived or your friend's grandparents lived or like people actually lived. Like there yeah. were people there. It wasn't like it is for, well, I mean, it's been 20 years since it's been a thing, but it is now the Venice-ish or the- Right, it's cool. Of, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So so you do get you do get juxtapositions like that there. Here, there are similar juxtapositions, but I just don't understand them because, like, I'm not from here. So I don't, right. like, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. I, I, the, like, well, I it's gotten out of hand. Yeah, it's got, it it's seems gotten to have hand. gotten out of hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gotten well out of hand. There, there's, there's a whole lot of, uh, issues. <laughs> it seems. Um, if you want to relate it to cars, okay. the same, uh, city council person, his name is Mike Bonin, who can be, uh, well, blamed okay. for uh, the policy. Let's. I'm not going to call it blamed for the the homeless situation, but blamed for policy changes at the beginning of the pandemic that, in my opinion, contributed heavily to where we're at today. Mm. He is also responsible for. Did you ever hear about the spontaneous road diet in L.A.? No. Oh yeah. The road diet. He's the road diet guy. So road diet. The road diet. So. All through Playa del Rey and down Vista del Mar, which was a two-lane road running along the ocean. Sure. He 
was in charge of an initiative that literally in the middle of the night scraped off all the lines on the road and just turned the two lane road into a one lane road with a uh, with a wide bike lane and then a whole bunch of parking spaces on the side. Wait, is that you talking about the Vista that, Del Mar was runs that along road? Dockweiler Beach? Right. I I went for a run there when you used to live at the other place. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That road. And Wait they just turned it into a one lane road in the middle of the night. Oh, that's called a road diet? <laughs> they call it the road diet. Because <laughs> the, the road got <laughs> They've slim. been doing it in other places, too. They did it on Venice. They turned a three-lane road into a two-lane road. Yeah, well, but a lot of cyclists were getting hit because of this yeah. weird... The bike lane was uh, between... It was like the lane, the bike lane, and then parking, and then people would you know need to turn right on a street. Oh, so people were no. turning so across a bike the lane. Cyclists. Yeah, but the cyclists had parked cars to deal with, so they couldn't like be as close to the sidewalk as, as they knew normally. On, the, on and Venice, it became a big on Venice. On it Venice, it made more, it made more sense. Yeah. It was annoying, but it made more sense. Well, I, I mean, but I here, think they it, ended up flipping it, where like the parking and the bike lane are switched now, or something. Now the bike lane is protected by the parked cars. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. I mean, I'm. C- they made him switch it back, by the way. In Vista Del Mar, yeah. the residents were so fucking pissed off that they did this. They made him scrape off the lines again and switch it back. So now it's like it was before, except the tarmac is completely fucked up from having the paint scraped off oh. it twice. And the city is $25 million poorer. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. We could have housed all of those people. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm not against repurposing, you know, because things weren't built for... Eight, I mean, New York True. has yeah, 8.5 yeah. million fucking people now. Like, it's crazy. I mean, everybody talks about it. You know, people, are, they're all leaving New York, the taxes or what, all this shit. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm okay with 2 million people leaving. Me too. And I'm okay with people leaving LA. Well, that's the thing. Go to it's, Texas. Go Joy to Texas. yourself. I mean, you know, like, it's a lot of people. There's a lot of needs when you have a lot of people together. Yeah. Whatever. So I'm okay with that. It's just that they got to think about it a little deeper well, look, before I, they I'm, do it. I'm pro, like, public transit and all that stuff. Like, I, I don't, I'm not just saying, like, Make every fucking highway wider. I'm not a widen the roads people. Right. But to turn a two lane road into a one lane road in the middle of the night I never without telling anybody is crazy. That's that's crazy. It was wild. I mean it was so bad. I mean without telling It was anybody? so bad they turned it back within like a week. <laughs> Like you, ha- you know they fucked up when the government about faces and goes back in a week. Oh, they, kn- you know they fucked up. So somebody said, "Well, this is leadership." So that that started as leadership, and then it was like, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I guess not. Uh, on a more positive Crazy. note, yeah. I got that Mustang Mach One today. Oh yeah, Wait, the I, gray I, I one gotta, outside. It's cool. That looks good, and it looks I, I, people who've driven it on track said it, it was really good on there. It is basically. I've only driven it like. Really, really briefly, so I have no idea about the handling, but but just around town, it basically feels like a budget GT350. Wow! Like so, it, how much? What? How much is it? For not me? any cheaper than the GT350. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody is pocketing the difference. I mean, I don't necessarily know that, but it's like this because this one might have. I, I didn't really read the option sheet that clearly. Yeah. But it's it's got the bullet motor. Right, mm. so cross plane crank, 480 horsepower, the Shelby gearbox, the Tremec, which okay. yes, yeah. yes, please, yeah, uh, the suspension and brakes from the formerly Performance Pack Two. Okay, so so a G, so it's the right? GT Venn it, diagram it, with the GT350. Yeah. It then has the same size wheels as the GT350R, but they're aluminum, not carbon. Mm. So when you curb them, that you don't. So yeah, so when you, curb <laughs> you don't them, have it's to. Okay, <laughs> and it then has aero that resembles the GT three fifty R, but isn't quite as aggressive, and is not made of carbon fiber. Okay, it's made of plastic. All right, so a little bit less special. It's a little less special, and then it's a little more special than the PP two was. Right, it's some somewhere in between there. Makes a lot of sense. I and I, I'll bet you it's. Ten grand less expensive to make? Yes, probably. Probably. And I bet there are going to be eighty percent less warranty claims. Oh yeah. Which is could really why Im- they did it. Could you I think. imagine the 
I, I would love to be a fly in the wall in that paperwork factory when that, <laughs> like all those claims. The voodoo engine? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love the voodoo engine, but something tells me Ford had fucking had it up to here oh, with that crap. motor. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they said, okay, let's make this 500 completely batshit. Yeah. People yeah, will yeah. stop talking about the 350. Yeah. We'll quietly stop making this engine Keep and the then we'll have that something that handles really well but costs a little less and we don't have to file we don't have to f- replace right. engines well constantly i mean that was as far as like real enthusiast like talking about it cred like that was a real i mean that for ford to do something like that was that was pretty ballsy yeah right i mean because it's not that big a deal from an engineering standpoint although from a, I guess from a, a durability standard standpoint, maybe yeah, maybe it was probably it was probably uh, a can't little difficult. Can't give that to a crowd of people either. <laughs> no, you can't it's give like that. the Aston V8. Yes, yes. Oh, look at I that! I fucking love those cars. They're the, the the not the V8. I mean, yes, but the the Shelby's are yeah, so yeah. fun. But like. Um, Couple of clients here who've got them, and um, they they have spent time into the workshop. Oh, oh my! You know, after after track work, yeah. Post post oh. post track days, yeah. there have been some repairs. So I, I take it Ford might. Uh, well, there it is. Yeah, they might they might be like fuck this fucking engine. Yeah, it's just it's not gonna. Jamal I mean, already left. Jamal's a Jaguar, oh, so fuck it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I mean, and that's a whole other story. Like, what's Jag gonna do now? Uh, new same V8. <laughs> yeah. I ran. Jag is, Jag's AJ, new move is uh, five liter AJ. dropping all four and six cylinders from the new F type. F type is going to be V8 only moving forward. That's G. Yeah. There's a new is. 450 horsepower one, and then there's going to be the 575 horsepower one, and that's going to be it. I mean, that and I'm okay with this. Well, because they didn't sell any of the other. I mean, they they did to Enterprise. Oh. They're like ninety bucks a day. Also, oh. the driver of the was it the F Type P three hundred? Yeah, that is the new M three driver. I, I was behind a guy that drove like a dick bag. He had a tilted adjustable hat backwards. <laughs> like he looked like he was the new salesman somewhere. But fucking man, was he king dick? <laughs> and he had a white F Type P three hundred that oh, had white less too. horsepower oh. than most of the crossovers around him. Yeah, and I think that's that's what they're doing. Oh my god. Yeah, but the huh. uh, the four hundred and fifty horsepower one. Rear wheel drive, not all wheel wow. drive. So this is so where it's there. There will be a return to, which is really funny awesome. for all those people that held their 2015 cars, thinking they were collectible. Could you imagine? Ooh, they're like, <laughs> I don't want to see anybody lose money, but boy, do those people deserve to lose money because oh those cars were never going to be collectible. Wait, who drove that after we did the thing out in Chuckwalla? Who drove that car home? Chris Hayes. JF. We we forced somebody JF to drive did. it. After JF did. Chris laminated yeah. the or delaminated. He chunked the tire. I yeah. remember Chris comes in and goes. And he's just like, terribly sorry. And I'll drive it back. I'll drive it back. I will. Yeah, I'm really sorry. And then four hours later, he just goes to Jeff. He's like, I just can't drive that car back. I'm just really sorry. And Jeff's like, I'll do it. And Chris drove the M5. Right. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Hayes drove the Corvette back. Oh, he drove the Corvette which back. Which had to get returned quickly. Oh, which had the, uh, the jump broken diff and trans and yeah. all that crap. Yeah. The bad six-speed, right? Six-speed auto in that? It was a... Oh, it was the auto. It was bad to start, and then it, something went wrong with it, They I think. basically gave us a non-Z51 automatic car for track yeah, work it wasn't it right. wasn't up to the task exactly no yeah, it wasn't good um what is oh, that then oh, there I, what, then the ipad oh, yeah what about that oh, uh, oh, oh that was jaguar's Jaguar future vehicles. oh That's sorry all. never mind i got distracted by a shiny thing on a screen <laughs> oh were there a lot of questions zach there's uh seven six seven seven all right okay are any of them good Thoughts on the Ford Maverick? Oh, oh. Do you have thoughts on the Ford I Maverick? Mean, listen, the only thoughts I have are that they're going to sell a bunch of them. They're really going to sell a bunch have of them. Have you those seen things. one in person, even a, like no, a static one? No, I haven't. I'm, I oh. think they did a thing out here, and I wasn't out here yet. But Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, they did a nice Mike thing. Levine invited me, but I, I said, can I drive it? And he said, not yet. And I said, let me know when I can. <laughs> Which I mean in the nicest way. But sure, like, of course. Know. But um, I, I mean, I think, I think that the price is right and I think yeah. the size is right and I think that the ridge line it's is, ridge line esque, right? Yeah, although it's smaller than the ridge it's smaller. It's very small. Yeah. And it's cheaper. It's it's in the twenties, I yeah, think. Yeah, it starts at about twenty something plus with uh, destination, right? So like twenty one five ish, right? Start but so no one's gonna buy that one. But you know, um 
for 32? That's a hell of a... I think it's a hell of a and truck. And were they all hybrid, or the, it's just a, there's a hybrid available? The first... Oh, God. See, now you got me. Sorry, I didn't mean to put I, you I on the spot. Been, I haven't been following every day. I'm probably supposed to know this, too, but it's not really in our wheelhouse. It's an attractive thing. Yeah. It actually, like, especially in that picture, the cab looked like a mini F-150 cab, which is kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's a little... Sp- uh, what is it? Sport track? Yeah, yeah. Um, but not not completely. the Hyundai one looks like pretty good too, right? That Hun- Santa, is that Santa Cruz? Cruz, that thing's good. The Santa it's Cruz, be cool. you know, that might be the that might be the dark horse in all this because it really that has some real style to it. You so know, Maverick is do you just think Honda's just long. like, oh fucking come on, we've been doing this forever. <laughs> like you realize <laughs> wow. we were doing this the whole time. Dude, they <laughs> fuck. The, but resale, I mean, just look at the resale on a Ridgeline. Every every re- Ridgeline from the beginning, you really? know, just holds its value. It's ridiculous. So back to selling your Jag. Oh yeah, now's the time to sell it, huh? So now's everyone's the time buying to sell shit. It. Everyone's buying shit. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. I don't. I mean, honestly, I think it's it's a. There's a, a real lack of inventory. Yeah. I mean, just everything that's been sold is, is sold. Yeah. Like, all the all the Japanese, like, the special Japanese cars are, that had 10,000 miles on it are all out of the woodwork. They've all been sold for $100,000, and there's nothing left. Like, what else? Like, there's nothing changing hands. It's been a very active last couple of years. Is this chip thing, like... Chip thing's real. Oh, it's real. It's real, but is yeah. it, like, Bitcoin? Or crypto mining, or is it real? No, no, no. It's totally unrelated. Yeah, you don't, no, use, just, you don't use that for mining Bitcoin. Uh, it's like it's just it's supply just chain. Supply chain uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at uh, so I was on a shoot last week, and our camera um, camera car operator's Raptor broke. Right, Fraser's Raptor like mm-hmm. broke a valve spring, and we got to get a tow down to the dealership and all this stuff. But um, we were talking to the tow truck driver about parts, and you know he's going to need valve springs. And the guy's like, "Look, it could take two days. It could take a week, depending on how you get parts." Yeah. Tow truck driver's like. Parts are so bad that when we need parts, we pull them off of other trucks. And in like some dealerships, if someone's truck comes in that needs something they can't get, they'll pull it off a car that's brand new that's sitting there. If if they know they're not going to sell it, and chips is a big part of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. very legit. It's hard to find. You know, Ponch, John, they're you're not going to find them. <laughs> can't get them. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn your mic off now. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that's <laughs> okay. Really, that's really bad. Um. um but well, yeah. That, yeah. That, that is mean, a real deal. I, I've seen the the inventory is very low here, just driving around. Yeah. It's, so I mean, I, I mean, my car is more is I could probably get more than what I paid for. Thank you for <laughs> you and Chris for that. That was funny. It's <laughs> very I, funny. I still. Day. I that was that was great. That was really good. Um. So yeah, I don't know, but then what do you replace it with? Because it's like it's like New York real estate. Like, oh, I got a, th- a million dollars for my apartment, but then I had to move to like, you know, <laughs> the outside of West, well, Morgantown, West Virginia. Like, yeah. where do you go? Well, like, you, what do you do? I think have you have you realized that like a old school stylish luxury car wears off after a while because it's not like it's that engaging to drive it's like that's the problem it looks cool and the idea of it is really cool <laughs> and it works as a car i mean but the, the fact that it came in third to the e39 m5 and the uh was it the amg, AMG e55 e55. Yeah. yeah it was third i mean it was like you know, <laughs> road and track. I I think it was road and track. Was it real driver. apologetically third. You're like, oh, we really like it, but you know, yeah, it's it's you know, it doesn't have LSD and like it's really wide and like it's got no headroom and it's got no trunk room and it's like, but it just looks so good. It does. Yeah, it really does. But so, now you have the A50, which kind of scratches the same itch. Mm-hmm. I know it's not yours, but like if you have access to that, right? Mm-hmm. It scratches a similar itch, so I need a different itch. Right, Scra- to scratch. It's a scratch. Yeah, like exactly. I kind of got over the SL Mercedes because it is, right. you know what I mean. Ultimately, it's like just an automatic, you know, whatever, you know, yeah, right, car from that period, and and like, and then something electronic happens, <laughs> and then you go. Fortunately, I got out of it before that did. But well, yeah, the Jag, the Jag, luckily, is great because it's it's you know it's an OBD two car. Yeah. It's um you know. All the things that have gone wrong with it are Ford related. Like it's just like it's not that it's bad. It's just that Ford does the thing where like you know you want to reset the um, uh, the sensors, right? Because the battery died, right? You got to reset the sensors to to do the 
do the inspection. Oh yeah. There's like it's like a it's like an Easter egg hunt. You're going 12 miles an hour. You're going five miles an hour. You got to go this oh, thing. You, you got to do, do that. All and, that? And I just I I tried it six or seven times. I couldn't get it. Oh, I have a guy man. that has done. His mom had one, and he has all the the Jag. Um, Diagnostic stuff mm -hmm. at his shop, so he just does it. He's like, just, 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 just leave it. <laughs> I got it. I got this for you again because you just, let the battery just die. Just leave it. Just leave it. The, <laughs> just leave it. The just leave it. I had to put uh, when I, I had disconnected the battery because uh, to put a tender connector on the thing, and then I went to smog the car, and they go, oh, you got to drive it. Oh, and I had to drive it five hundred miles. Oh, yeah, but I like, guess what? We're going to Vegas for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I have to fucking clear a code. Ugh. Right. I right. drove the Jag a thousand miles. It didn't clear it. <laughs> no way. No, because you have to do it exactly the way. You have to do the, the drive. The drive. Uh, thing like you that. have to go to like the SUNY Purchase parking lot. Otherwise, it won't Literally work. Literally that. Except there's a point. No, you, you, it's the SUNY Purchase parking lot. You have to break the speed limit by like. You know, like 20 miles they an hour. They give you a task that's like impossible to complete on normal roads or yeah. in a parking lot. It's crazy. But I mean, other than that, because it's all Denso electronics, like Ford uh -huh. went to Denso. And so it's like, it has none of the problems of like an early Jag. Everything is modular. Yeah. It's, it's you, probably the same wiring harness as my Aston Martin. <laughs> Um, maybe. Except there's four extra hey. spark plugs. <laughs> other than that, it's probably the same shit. Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, it's a pretty easy car to take yeah. care of. What should you get? Probably an E thirty. Probably an E thirty. I y no. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I like that, but I mean, well, what do you want to do? What do you want from know, a car? Zach, I don't or know. a Lotus Elise. A Lotus Elise could Ooh. be interesting. Yeah. Right? What are those? About thirty for a always. Decent one? Always They're thirty forever. <laughs> forever for the until the end of time. Right. For it's thirty thousand like, dollar car. It's like buying Dogecoin. It's like it's always <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> No matter what, unless Tom like, Morningstar bought Dogecoin about, about Lotus Elise, then and then it, you know <laughs> it's, it's the best. Well, he, I mean, he—you never know. He might tweet about the Lotus Elise. He might. And they're Tom dollars. Morningstar bought like I don't know fifty dollars of Dogecoin in twenty thirteen. <laughs> oh, and then you know, I mean, who knows what happened to it? It's gone. It's it's. It would probably be worth millions of dollars. It's gone. It was when he Dogecoin was like fractions oh of a penny. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. But wait a minute. So he doesn't. No, I, I that would happen to me totally. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm totally it <laughs> exactly. I'm totally. Fuck, of course it would. What's your MySpace password? I That's mean, the same equivalent. Exactly. Good luck. <laughs> Holy shit, my MySpace pass. I wonder what my Friendster password is. Uh, a friend of mine was tweeting about crypto security the other day, and I literally responded that I didn't. I understood less than a third of the words in his tweet fewer exactly. than a third of the words in his tweet well, it's, it's really funny because i have a friend from from high school who you know we were kind of metalheads together right and he took up he went to union college right mm -hmm. and then so we lost touch a bit and then i th thanks to facebook I, I i found out that he had gotten his phd in in mechanical engineering so i'm like oh this is great mechanical engineering i'm gonna see what i'm gonna read one of his papers right it's about uh, it's hydrodynamics. I think was his field, right? So I go, I find, I go. All right, I'm going to read this. I got, I think, second word. I was out. Like <laughs> I, I had, I already, I, I couldn't get through the first. I realized like the blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. The second word started with an A. There was a K in the middle, and then there was <laughs> like the vernacular problem. Is yeah, like, yeah, you just yeah. you don't you, yeah. unless you are in the vernacular. I mean, but you that's watch the two kind doctors of talk to each other, and you realize oh, yeah. like that's how they want to talk, but then they talk. To normal people, like okay, right. you're, so your brain, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it made me think, like you know, everybody who thinks they know how things are, like you don't know shit. Like you don't know unless you can read that first sentence. That's why people are like the fucking the the vaccine. It changes your DNA. I'm like, tell me one other thing that you know about <laughs> DNA. Exactly. Anything. One yeah. one DNA fact. Do you right. know? Like, I'm no fucking I shit. Mean, that's unfortunately the problem. I'm is, so aware of what I don't know. Right, exactly. You, I, Listen I, to I'm expert. painfully aware. You've of, seen me talk. You've seen a video of me talking to Donnie. That, right. Yeah. That's all. You. This is just an old car. <laughs> I'm fucking kidding me. <laughs> Hear this guy talk. He goes, "I had this. I had this recoded in polonium." <laughs> Polonium. Good. Why? Why? I don't know. Why'd you do that for? Because that's what they did. That's the thing. <laughs> Polonium. 
battery, that's not even a real thing. I it's like it polonium. Be. It's like, it could be anything. Yeah, it's polonium. <laughs> don't worry about it. I think I was doing a Doc Brown. <laughs> it was a bit of Maybe. Doc Brown. It's fine. <laughs> Who's on him? <laughs> Doc, um, Doc! Doc! Nick Albo says, what's a car that you loved in high school but grew up and realized oh, it's total everything. garbage? Everything. Every car. Lots. Every car I loved in high school is garbage. Yeah. Every, I mean, I grew up, I mean, I'm old enough to have been the last muscle car generation, I would say, even though I'm an ex, I'm not a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> but like a minute after I left high school, like Hondas became fast Hondas became a thing like that. But so like everything I loved in high school was garbage. GTOs, a 68 GTO would have been the thing that I loved the most. But like that's garbage. Yeah. You know, like every every car that I loved was garbage. Here's one that I really loved that was garbage. Uh, was the that 68 327 vet? No, 60 68 327 vet. The like this the small engine. Corvette. Yeah, the, the right the well. Yeah, C3s. 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 C3s, C3s are Absolute in garbage. fact garbage. Complete. Too bad because they look fabulous. I l- still love them. They look fabulous. Yeah. yeah. So A car I learned that was garbage uh, would be. Um, I mean, I I. I Begrudgingly, kind of have to say the DeLorean. Ooh, yeah, you know, I guess so, yeah. which it wouldn't be fair to not cop to that being pretty much garbage. Um, but also kind of Fox bodies. You know, Fox bodies are kind of garbage. I mean, they're charming garbage, but they are kind of garbage. sort of muscle cars though. Hey, like they're yeah. garbage at turning and stopping. Yeah, and accelerating to a point. But uh, but you know, they're charming. They look yeah. cool. Six eight GTO. It's iconic look. It's yeah, good. You know, right. makes noise. Yeah, but that's what they do. All the yeah. things we like, we go. Oh, we're supposed to turn and stop. Oh, cars oh. do this well. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Actually, another one. Well, I've always loved the 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 C twos, like the C, the um, like the the Stingray. Like oh the yeah. Mid like the the Stingray fastback. Of course. Sixty seven, sixty six. Yeah. Total. They're garbage. not. They're not 63 that good. Sixty three split window. It's the gar- ones I've driven that were not like crazy full chassis builds are not that yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Miguel Flores, thoughts on uh, McLaren having too many variations of the same car? Seems like all the special models are just a 720 and fancy body you know, work. It's the, it's the nature of the age we live in, right? I and mean, it's the nature of incrementalism. Mm-hmm. There's, it's just, I, I, it makes, that's how the business works for them. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, it's it's a it's an embarrassment of riches, right? Like in the 1970s and 80s, nobody was like, "Is does Lamborghini have too many models?" Like they had one, right. they had one car. Like there was they right. had the, there was just the 911 for like all of the 1970s. That's you know, ex- and, you know there was it's a little bit of 912, a little bit of 914, but like really, we're just talking about the 911. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like. Yeah, that's true. Do is to say like do these are these companies making too many sports cars? On the one hand, it's like well we should be happy they're making so many sports cars. Right. Um, on the other hand, inc- like you said, incrementalism. But on the on third hand, <laughs> you know, a lot of work does go into those cars, oh, even yeah. if they're quote just you know if you're you base a whole model range around a tub, you know, and a powertrain. I could understand why they want to stretch that. Yeah. Well, some of that incrementalism is big performance gains, right? So you right. go, mm-hmm. you know, you, the, the just a little bit of aerodynamic tweaking, a little bit of you know, add a uh, um, a bit of active aero, mm-hmm. and and all of a sudden, you know, your your um, <laughs> your LMP two speeds like on the track. Well, yeah, or exactly. And also, you have downforce sometimes, and you have low drag sometimes, and it's like. Shit! Oh, this car—it looks exactly like this other car. Yeah. But it can do more things, like 720 versus. Well, 720 is actually versus different. the speed tail versus or the, speed the Senna. Tail. Exactly. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and also McLaren doesn't have an Audi. <laughs> McLaren doesn't have a Fiat. Right. You know, uh, the, the McLaren is by itself, and so they have to, if they can take the engineering development of the 720 and amortize it for a short run of cars that literally will sell for 10 times as much money. Right. Wouldn't you do that uh, if you were them, I think? I mean, uh, listen, whatever it takes to make money making cars, like that's, I mean, how they would have been it's dead easy, in the water if they didn't do that tub, that tub plan, that right. single tub deal. Yeah. It's easy for us to, to tell a company 
It's like calling a rock, you know, a rock band selling out stadiums a sellout or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's man. easy for us to tell someone they should be making less money. Right. You know <laughs> exactly. Tell the Foo Fighters they I'm, should, you know, yeah. they should make. I'm sure the investors less, don't. Fewer want pop it. hooks, damn it. Yeah. Uh, Kai Todd says, uh, "Why? Uh, well, why is my Citizen better than my Seiko at keeping time? Both are four hundred dollars, but the Eco Drive works better than the automatic." Well, I was just looking at an Eco Drive. That, I'm, I, I want to hear the answer to this. Well, an Eco Drive, as I, I, and I haven't studied Citizen watches, but I'm ninety nine percent sure an Eco Drive watch is a solar powered quartz movement. Okay, which is. No matter, there's no automatic spring wound movement on the yeah. planet that will keep up with a solar powered quartz movement in terms of accuracy. It's just, it's just not. You could spend forty thousand dollars on a paddock, and it's not happening. Right. You know, and any automatic watch will have a variation plus minus uh, seconds per day, and it might be, you know, plus plus one, minus six, plus two, minus ten. And and each watch is a little different. Um, you know, if you're wearing a, a $400 Seiko is actually a very nice watch. But if you're literally wearing it every day, then by the end of a couple of weeks, it's going to be a couple minutes off and you're going to have to adjust it. That's mm. normal. Uh, Citizen Eco Drive, which is a fabulous tool watch, being a quartz movement, it, it won't be off at all. It'll just always be right. Yeah. And the downside of that is you don't have the mechanical nature of a watch, which may or may not be what you want out of a watch. But that's why uh, a quartz watch will keep better time than a, yeah. a manual watch. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, I just, I have this. We were you just have a great watch. The, it was a Seiko just SKX. Just standard XKS. Uh, 007, I think, or 007, 9? Uh, 007. 007 with Seven. The, uh, Japan, but uh, made in Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to set you up with a shadow watchmaker uh, to do some fake aging on that. It'll I be fun. Do, I saw some of that stuff. I, I'm, good. I'm totally down with that. Yeah, fake aging Seikos is, is good pastime. Yeah. Uh, oh, speaking of which, Polar Bear says, how much to how much is too much to pay for a new Seiko? Um, okay, so here's the thing. Seiko has a few levels of watches. They've got like what Spinelli's wearing right now, which are kind of the entry-level divers, which are my favorite thing they make. They're like three to five hundred dollars and you get a really nice well-made watch and you could do mods and all kinds of stuff yeah you then have a class up from that the the the, the higher end divers which are like a thousand to four thousand they're really well made they'll last you the rest of your life they're incredibly accurate and they're hand finished movements but I agree that's a lot of money to pay for something that says Seiko on it so if I was gonna pay more than a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars for a Seiko, I would probably want to jump to a Grand Seiko, mm. which is going to be a little more. But in but it's really going to be something that is, um, you know, where you're not questioning like, is this worthwhile? But like, if you go up, Zach, like these these turtles here and these mm. SKXs, these are great. They're like three hundred dollars, bunch of different colors, and then you can modify them with aftermarket parts to your. To your heart's content. I like that idea. Yeah, it's fun. It's like the uh, like the it's like a, the Mustang and the Camaro of the watch world, and you can Very make nice. it your own later. But like, yeah, I wouldn't go down the five thousand dollar Seiko rabbit hole. I would go for a Grand Seiko if that's what I if that's where I wanted to be. Uh, Ryan says Spinelli. Years ago, you did a video about how the Z4M oh. Coupe is the last great analog sports car. Is this still, still the, the case? case? Wow, that's a great question because it was real. That show was about. The that one car and the mods that they did to it. Um, I really like that car. I was it the last great analog sports car. Wow. Um, what else? Well, what else was around I mean, at this listen, time? I, I've driven a nine nine one GT three recently. Well, that there's that. Yeah, yeah. Pretty analog. I mean, it, yeah, you know true. what I mean. Like it's a stick and. Just, and yeah, I think we were talking about a budget Shelby three fifties. Well, that's that Mustang Mach One outside is pretty pretty good in analog. Um, electric steering, though, right? Oh, it's true, electric yeah, steering. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's a great question, and thanks for calling me out on that because that is still up there, and I still get sort of questions about that. And I, 
I was I, the, the the mods that the Classic Car Club did to that particular one mm -hmm. made it much much more enjoyable to drive than the standard one, which I've always been a little bit f not. A f Do you remember what they did to it? Oh man, this is it was six or seven years uh, ago. No, I don't talk about it. Um, I'll have to think about it. But it was re it, the way they did. They, they basically made it so that. The fear of the end coming around, because that car you can't. You're so down into it that it doesn't. It doesn't kind of turn nicely. It just mm -hmm. sort of like it has. It's a little it's sort of prickly. But what they, I think they added bar in the back or something. They hmm. they made it really nice. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I like a Z4M. Yeah. Last like M car with a key. Oh my God! Yes. Last yeah. Wow. Last BMW car still, you started with you the key. Know, that's something I would buy though. You're you know. You can buy one of those. That. Those are cool. I would love to get one of yeah, those. Yeah, those are that's a good Spinelli mobile. Yeah, I would. Okay. That would be nice. Take a look at what those are yeah. going for. Um, is that? Did we answer that last show? I feel like didn't we talk about this last show, Zach? Mm. I don't know. No, Flannel Bob he asked says it again. Uh, maybe Herbs. Flannel Bob says if any of you driven the E36 M3 with the hot Euro S52 that we didn't get in America. No, I haven't, but I have driven an E36 M3 with an S54 in it, <laughs> Did which you? I mean is about as good a BM, you know, and it was I did it for modified on Haggerty. There's video of it. I talk all about it. It was a carb legal swap. And honestly, it was nice, but like, it didn't, it didn't like, it didn't knock, it didn't knock my socks off. So, so what was the what was the S fifty two euro was was it two hundred and eighty something? It was like two ninety something, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the American one was two thirty something, right? Yeah. I I've never driven the euro one either. I can't. Um, I can't imagine it would be that they much mean, more. The S54 was 333, and right. it and wasn't you... mind blowing. Interesting. The chat. So chassis wise, eh. Hmm. I don't love E36s. It didn't. It didn't. Zach? I don't. Have, I have an E46. No, oh no, I know. I know. It didn't blow me away. You, I've, I've driven E36s. I liked a lot, but um, th you know, the one I liked the most had full suspension in it and a yeah. half cage and all that stuff. I like them. I think they look awesome. I think they're just some of the best looking cars, kind of of the '90s. I like the angular look and I like the yeah, proportions sure. and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I'm not going to argue with Matt over what he likes or doesn't <laughs> no, like. No, no, I know. But uh, so they went from being underpriced to overpriced pretty quickly. Oh yeah, right? that's that was an that's the amazing thing about those because you can't not... get a euro for under what thirty five grand now. Yeah, I don't know. Is, that, is it that much? I think it's that much. What? I mean, they don't come. Up, you don't see them very often, but they're. I no, think I, yeah. I don't think a lot. I don't think a lot of they're. It's worth importing them, right? You know, right. they don't I look any I different. I could be wrong. I, I'd like to True. take a look. You know, may, maybe this is my thing. Now I'm going to look at that era of BMWs, and then a little bit after. I, I'm not getting an E46. I, I just I, I missed it. Join us. Whatever. <laughs> Join us. Join us. How about like yeah. join the check engine some, light club? Some guy. <laughs> some guy just tried to sell me a, like a gray market shady title Renault Renault Clio Sport V6 Cup. With like the engine in the back, shady. What? Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, like super shady gray market. Like, hey, huh. I could, I, if you want this, I get title for you. <laughs> Do you want to buy that smart How car much? downstairs? I, I Please? don't think that can't be. That can never be registered anywhere as a car. <laughs> no, it can. Can it? Yeah, it's got a California title. Oh, yeah. So maybe. Um, <laughs> What is it? Is it is it standard? No, don't buy that. <laughs> standard smart car under don't the hood. Don't buy that. Under the hood, it's a standard. You could buy that Ferrari downstairs, though. That could be you. See, I really you, like is that. Is Spinelli a five seven five guy? Yeah, uh, five seven five. I would drive a five seven five, but again, for the F one, and it's not that I don't like the. I know. But I, you know, I drove a couple of F ones back in the day, like back then. Well, no, a little bit after that, and there it was just. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, come on with that. You, you know, could probably convert it for 20. 20. So yeah. actually, actually, so so if that car is 80 and it would be like 150 if it was a yeah, stick. Yeah, there's an argument. There's that an there's argument a, to be made. There's a middle ground there where the driving experience becomes worth fucking with the provenance. Yes, because yeah. the pro, you know, like let's face it, like provenance of a of a twenty six thousand mile Ferrari, whatever. What's a five fifty go for with a stick? With a stick, like a hundred, hundreds, 
hundred. This, this is, you, it's a lot. It's a lot. It is. You go but 80. They're nice. Yeah. They are, they are nice. And 360 manuals are a hundred now too. Right. What about those? So these guys that are doing manual swaps on newer Ferraris. They're, if you're talking about the people in Texas, it's not a legitimate business model. Oh. Yeah. What about the, then, um, um, who was doing, oh, yeah, wait, who did the, the 355? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Le Mans driver. Oh, you're, uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, did, um, I drove it. Oh, I'm Ke- uh, Jeff. Jeff Siegel? Jeff Siegel. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Jeff. Yes, exactly. Sorry. Oh, did he convert a 355 F1 oh, to a stick? N- n- I know. I thought they were going to try to do a, I thought they were doing a 458, but I don't remember. Oh. That, anyway, yeah, I could be totally wrong. I have to ask. You can't convert a 458. I, I, tr- I, I researched this heavily. I feel like there are. <laughs> There are electronics that don't match up. There's a lot of things. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons you can't do it. Yeah. Oh well. It's okay. It is what it is. So anyway, I'm not. It'd be what it be, Ma. <laughs> it'd be what it be. What it be. Um, so how long are you in town for? Uh, till I'm leaving <laughs> Friday morning on at the on the seven o'clock. Oh, okay. So you're so around. Just a little bit. Of, yeah. I'm so you're hanging. Are you hanging out? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, this is good. Do you want to come film with us on Wednesday? Uh, well, Wednesday, I sh- I'm going to Gunther. Oh, shit. What are you filming? Where are you going? We're filming the, the Mustang, and we're uh, filming... I, would I have totally a hog right now. I saw that. I have that. a Harley Davidson. I, it's I interesting. Mean, yeah. I, I felt... Well, I fell in love with... I, we, did, we talked about this. I fell in love with that um, the really big... Um, what was it? It was a... Uh, it was a... A Triumph Thunderbird. Oh, Yeah. I fell in love with that bike. It was like 1600 cc. Oh wait, you mean the Triumph Rocket? No, the big What's ass. The th- is a Thunderbird? It's called. Yeah, well, right, you, Zach. Is that what it's called? Triumph Thunderbird. Triumph Thunderbird. It's like a 2010. The oh, one okay. that I love. Oh, the one is that it I a love. Cruiser? No, it's not. It's not a, a 1950. I don't know. Um, 2000. Yeah, I tried 2010. Triumph. Oh, look at that. Yeah, this thing. Oh yeah, cool. It's not the best looking thing from the front, but I really like this thing. It looks nice. Yeah, it's all right. Bad. I I really love the way this thing handles as a big bike. It was really one of the first big bikes I, I ever rode. Yeah, so I, the Harley I'm riding kind of looks you have like a that. custom soft tail, right? I mean, because I always like the custom yeah, soft tail. Yeah, it's a soft also. tail, but it's the Fat Bob, which is oh. the variant that's got the meaty tires and yeah, yeah. The it's, one that's going after what the Indians do, and the Indian yeah, chief, right? Yeah, it or, right yeah, into whatever one of the Indians. Yeah, I have to read a little more. I've been, I've only been riding, not reading. Right, right. But right. it's, it's a real interesting to ride. It's fucking heavy. I mean, it's like, really, what is it? Six something. Pounds? It's all steel. The Jeez. whole thing is metal, and I don't. The blinkers is one, one per thumb. It's not a oh. one rocker switch. Oh, one here, one there? Like, yeah, the one on the right, yeah. it's like, I I don't know, maybe I'm just not good at motorcycle riding, but I can't hit the blinker without it adjusting the throttle a little bit. <laughs> like, so, it's, I, so it's like I keep, I, it's kind of far away, and I got big hands, so I'm trying to hit the blinker, and I keep going, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> it's like so much torque. I'm like, oh, fuck! So I didn't want, I didn't want torque right then. I don't, I don't need torque. I'm turning. Yeah. <laughs> Please. In fact, the last thing I need right now is torque. Yeah. I need less torque. But I feel really cool. Oh, it redlines at 5,500. Holy shit! And I just, so it's I, like an it Edda. Just goes glub, speaking glub, of being, glub, glub, speak, glub. Speaking of me, 30s. It's like an Edda. Yeah. It's like a diesel. It's, like, it's yeah. crazy. The diesel God. motorcycle. Blah, 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 I don't know. You know, I think there. that's, I mean, I do I, just because of demographics, do I just sell the Jag and buy like a big old Harley and just, just putter around town? You would never ride it. No. You I would never, never ride it in New York. I still yeah. ride it. And the thing, if you get a, an Elise, which would suit you, would be like the mature version of the MR2, mm. but would you let it sit the whole time? No, no, well... I, no, I couldn't. No, I wouldn't. If I got it, I wouldn't let it sit this time. This time, I would actually. This time, I'll treat it because that yeah. might that might scratch the MR2 fix that uh, that's very know, true. left dormant for a long time. God, I, you or know, you could you could really be the one person that sees value in the C4 ZR1. Just say, just put that out there. C4 ZR1. So I'm saying. I had a it's friend like whose dad grand. had one. I know yeah. those never go up. Yeah, <laughs> it's the <laughs> inverse. That? It's the inverse of the lease. The lease <laughs> never goes down. These never, never go, go back up. up. Yeah, I, the, but the green is it green with the black interior? I, I'll take it. They're fucking fast. Yeah, really fast. They're fast. Yeah, and your name is Spinelli, and you live in New Rochelle. 
You it's know, incredibly it's, appropriate. I had a friend whose dad had one of those after. Um, I, listen, I'm not saying. Are you doing walking? <laughs> I'm not saying he did it. I'm not saying he didn't do it. But he did something, and he ended up with that thing. All of a sudden, lived in a nice, modest house. You know, just They're modest. The, the Corvette is that instant come up. Right. It's, it's like, the, it's, it's don't, buy yeah. don't, don't, <laughs> don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. What did I, I tell you? What did I tell what you? I <laughs> Exactly. It's like this son of a bitch bought a fucking yeah, somewhere F- between ones that in my and the guy name. in the what? big Lebowski who gets, gets his shit smashed in Pasadena. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but that's what I know. That's what I know about that. Um, the the Mercury uh, Marine engine yeah. and the uh, uh, what's it the, the ZF? Oh, no, was it, what was it ZF? Oh, oh no, was the it gearbox? Tr- Tramic or uh, ZF? I don't remember. Tremic. Tremic. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, I think since I think it was Tremic. Yeah. Wouldn't I mean that you would look good in a ZR one? I wouldn't look bad. I'll tell you that. ZF uh, six B. Oh, ZF. Look at you. Hey, listen. You know. Look at you. Twenty three hundred dollars to replace that. <laughs> That's twenty three hundred. Twenty three hundred. You got any on the uh, on the part? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Copart, I found out they have a um, a content team. I was like, like what? Like Copart, every there are so many influ- influencers. There's so many YouTube people doing Copart content that Copart now has a content team. That is hilarious. It's amazing. I think it's amazing. I mean, it shows. Is it just a team that deals with the YouTube YouTubers? I, I or is it internal? Mm, that's a good point. That's a good question. I think they deal with the YouTubers and they also provide content to yeah, them that's awesome it's a really smart business decision to do that hilarious yes um well if you can't come on wednesday i hope you can yeah if you can't then you should come hang out back here yeah for whatever other show we're doing this week would we have another show this week yeah what do we have mm, friday i think oh friday that could be a problem oh yeah patterson yep dave patterson in the house well you're gone oh, dave patterson yeah you're i'm gone. flying out in the morning this motherfucker i swear to god <laughs> this motherfucker patterson. Is all, yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> you got the you got the end of that word perfectly. Right, that, yeah. right, right. You just drop you never, all R's. There's never an R. No R's, I don't, yeah. There hasn't been an R it, spoken. If in that accent, there's only one time there's a hard R used. And no, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> that's back in the day. Yes. Not for me. I'm not talking for about me. From, go watch The Sopranos. Go watch The Sopranos. That's not me. There's a comedian named uh, like Chris Nickerson, and he's like, you've never heard a K <laughs> that needed to be landed <laughs> right, more right. firmly than in my name. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. Thanks for stopping by, Spinelli. Listen, I'm so glad to be out here. you got to let me know where I'm driving tomorrow morning. It's all about the drive. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's yeah. all about the drive.com. Yes, uh, the drive.com. A, New live stream coming up. Get ready for that. I mean, the oh, JF I'll, I'll do that wait, if wait, you Wait, wait, real quick. Did, you know, so I did my first one. Uh-huh. I asked Zach. Zach gave me a lot of really good advice. I was like, who am I going to get to do the first one? It's going to be JF because I know something's going to go wrong, and I know that JF will be able to roll with it or ha- or handle it, uh-huh. like in a technical sense. So we, had, so you know, figured ten years since Drive started, we talk about the ten year thing. We had a we had a very nice discussion, and my I was <laughs> I was shooting it with a Hero Nine, and it overheated, and there I and I just yeah, exactly suck. and I went away, and JF. About did it overheat in about twenty seven minutes? It it was ex- it was like thirty two minutes. Yeah. That's how long a hero. Oh no! It might have been less than that. It was probably it was probably twenty seven because it was also really hot that day. But they only yeah, yeah. What the hell? I've never had one last longer than that. So I left. I came back. JF ran with the show. It was very. It's actually very good. It was very Wayne's World, and I think I'm going to lean into the Wayne's World aspect of live streaming. I think someone needs to invent like a cooling blanket for the Hero Nine or something because. Yeah. Have you seen my Land Cruiser review that went up today? The camera overheated on. Oh no shit! Yeah, yeah, All right, well, yeah, I, it's yeah. a thing. Not that you need to watch it, but like, I mean, you like these people. I will. The, you, the other, this you, the this, microphone, <laughs> the, the you, the, royal the microphone you. goes to. Right. Yeah. I mean, I will watch it as well. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. So, so live stream coming up. Uh, I'll be using either that camera. We'll keep it short, or or we'll get some that's more cameras. Frust- fucking frustrating. Yeah, it is. It is. But uh, live streaming uh, is a. I, I mean, it's it's like. It's like a, a little bit like what we used to do on Maxim Radio, yeah. which was I really like doing that. And then after Drive, I just sort of miss hanging out and talking to everybody like like we used to do. And so this is a good opportunity to do that. And um, you know, we'll see what happens with the channel. For sure, for sure. Yeah. 
All right, kids, thanks very much. If you're with us live, we'll be back on Friday, maybe before then, but maybe not. I don't know. I have to make a run to the desert to get the Lambo from Donnie, uh, yes. which we may have to do it in the middle of the night because it's going to be super hot. It's going to be a fucking heat wave. Yeah, oh, what the yeah. hell? I come so here. I don't, don't want to go to the desert. <laughs> I don't right. want to go out to the desert and if it's gonna be throw 91 myself into here, a traffic jam. Uh, if it's 91 here, what is it in the de- 138? Oh, 110. Bad. Yeah, bad. God. Yeah. But it'll come, you just come a little bit by the beach by us. It'll be all right. Uh, all right, folks. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy yourselves. Drive safe. We'll see you soon. Bye.